Come on.
There we are. Hello, welcome. Hi, Mina. And hi, HK Buddha. I'm assuming Buddha's just fine. Sorry, Mina, today's another no tits day. Because, uh, we're all good right now, but we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be going to a little date with Kisu tonight, and it's a, uh, no throwing kind of restaurant, unfortunately. I asked ahead, they said no. I am sorry. I know it's something you look forward to. Thank you for the hydrates, though. <laughs> Thank you for the protest. The hydrates in protest. Peace is not here just yet. Um, she she texted ahead and said that she was uh, held up in traffic. Um, as far as I know, she's just walking from her shrine, so I'm not 100% sure what that means, but who knows? You know, it's hot fox shit. It's it's not for me to know. But yes, welcome in everyone. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and do my little tweet. Tweet my silly little Norn tweets to let everyone know that we're starting. Oh, I'm a little... I seem a little stuttery. It's because I'm a little nervous. I haven't done it. I haven't gone on a date in so long. And I haven't done a... I haven't dated a... A VTuber before. I haven't gone on a date with a VTuber before. You know, it's exciting. But I think I've got everything set up that I need to. I think we're going to have a lovely time. Let's see. All right. I think that's all good. That's all set up. Excellent. Yes, how is everyone tonight? And before Kisu gets here, I would like to explain to you all exactly how the how everything's gonna work, basically. Um, so I have set up for us to use a special command. Um, you'll notice that I mention it in the overlay and I mention it in the title, but all you have to do is type. Um, here, I'll do a little example for you all. All you have to do is exclamation point date, and then whatever you type after that is going to go into a little text file that I will look at to make sure that I have the best lines and make sure that I can, you know, bring my A game, have the riz, as the kids would say. So if I do that, Helperphilia will let me know that I've gone ahead and submitted my suggestion, and then when I go to my little text file, uh, which you can't see, but I can. It updates, and I know that the first thing I should try out with Kisu is to perish. Um, so this should be a pretty short date. <laughs> but yes, um, and unfortunately, the locations have already been scouted out. Um, but I will take your suggestions for lines, and I will take your suggestions for um, questions, topics, things like that. And in lieu of receiving any of those, I will probably God, be an awkward mess. <laughs> out. I mean, Kisu and I are married and all, but that doesn't mean that we've gone on any dates. This will be, you know, I got to make it special or else she might not eat my soul. And that's that's the goal tonight is to get our souls eaten. Well, to get my soul eaten. If y'all want to get your souls eaten, you can have your own, you can fix your own dates with Kisu. Yeah, I'm just settling in. Actually, you know what? Oh, hey, Kel hey, Ketzer, welcome in. How are you doing? Let's see. Good, we'll be lurking. Well, thank you for the lurk. I'm glad it's going well. Let's see. You know, let's. We might as well actually wait at the restaurant, shouldn't we? It'd be silly to wait here and then meet her there.
There we go. All right. Well, we're here. Isu's not here just yet, but I'm sure she'll show up eventually. It's unthinkable that she would, you know, stand me up. Could you imagine? I can imagine. That's actually happened to me before. Well, it's actually, you know what, for, for, for those here, tell me some of your, your most memorable date experiences, if you have any. Whether those are good or bad. I, for one, have certainly had been on some rather unpleasant dates. <laughs> I've also been stood up a few times, more than a few times, even. Which. You know, I could figure, I could handle, well, I'd be sad, but I could understand if I was the type of person that people just didn't agree to go on dates with, but the fact that multiple people agreed and then stood me up seems... Was it catfishing? Am I just the kind of person that you think about it and decide last minute that it's just no good? One person, let's see. Oh, hey, Lightning. Lauren, let me know if you now, I'll keep a car running outside. Oh, thank you, Lightning. Uh, if, 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 if if things go real wrong, I'll let you know. I'll holler and I'll jump in the, I'm assuming by car you mean mech. I'm assuming it's some manner of mobile suit to escape in. The emergency gym. <laughs> yeah. One time, um, I... Uh, I got a date. I set up a date through a dating app with someone from my school, my uh, college. And we were just going to meet somewhere on campus. And um, she was Australian. And we were talking and, you know, I was like... Um, wait a second, is this getting over it music? Oh! It does certainly sound like it, doesn't it? That's very funny then, because this is, and very on point, because this isn't deliberately getting over it music. This is, in fact, um, no copyright coffee house music. So I'm assuming that um, the getting over it, the getting over it dev also made use of uh, royalty free assets. That's extremely on point for that game. In fact, it, it's the only acceptable uh, way to, for it to be. Yeah, the, um... Oh, but to finish my story. But yeah, we set up to go somewhere on campus, and then she sent me a message after I'd been waiting for... I'd been waiting for, like, more than an hour. I am always the type, when I get stood up, I wait, like, a couple hours. I don't know why I do this. Oh, why is it so loud? Chill out. But yeah, I always wait a little too long, and when I wait a little too long, suddenly I find out that, oh... Oh, no... And, uh, yeah, she sent me a message saying that she was being deported, which I would have just accepted that she just didn't feel it that day. I would have accepted it. Oh, it's fine, actually. It's, you, I, I'm, 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 it's okay. You don't have to lie to me. You don't have to tell me that you're at risk of being deported. Because I feel like I would have seen elsewhere news that one of our students got fucking deported, you know? So I think someone claiming to get deported is probably the the biggest, ex the, the wildest excuse I've been given for being stood up on a date. But it's also usually, you know, usually when I get stood up, it's, there's not even an excuse, it's just silence. I don't know. Do I give the vibe of someone that you think it's funny to stand up? Would you stand me up on a date? I think not. That works too, uh huh? I actually had to do that for a buddy of mine while he was trying to go on a date with a lady to a haunted house. I was there for like two hours waiting before he finally got there with his date and wanted to dip because it was not a good time for mall. A haunted house, I feel like, is such a a bold choice. I feel like that's such a like wild, like why are you why are you going with the haunted house? That's that's incredible in in its own way. Uh, 
It's just adjusting my gain a little bit on my microphone because it seems weirdly loud. And I truly don't know why. Do I have my fil filter set up? I do. Is this, does this sound about right? Turn that off. <laughs> I don't remember what I had that plugin set to, so it probably did some kind of wacky sound effect, but I have no idea what. I'd be lucky to be on a date in the first. Oh, don't say that. I mean, certainly with the pandemic, it's I think harder to get a date, a responsible date, ASMR mode. Yeah, I think so. Although I thought I had undone all the things that was putting me in ASMR mode. Um, I would have thought anyway, but apparently I didn't. Maybe it's just a mic distance thing. Maybe I'm usually farther away. Get away from me, microphone. You're too close. There, is that better? That's a little better, actually. Because, you know... Thank you for the redeem, Mina. Sure, you can have some jaw harp. There we go. I tried to jaw harp to the music a little bit. You know, jazz doesn't give enough space for the jaw harp solos. <laughs> Truly a mystery to me. Such a beautiful instrument. I said that like I meant that sarcastically, but honestly, it's a, it is a cool instrument. Like, I don't mean to dunk on the jaw harp. Yes, yeah, so if any of you have some um, date suggestions, if some lines, some questions, topics, you can go ahead and uh, seed those if you want. Um, there's no cooldown on the... Actually, I should double check. I need to turn off one thing for the commands because I... Let's see. Date line, edit, unlock. There we go. All right, there we go. So now if two people do it at the same time, it should still record both, which is important. All right. Yeah, whenever y'all want to do that. There is no, there is no uwu command. If, there's not even an uwu redeem, if you would like. An uwu. Okay. So, yes, you've introduced an empty... <laughs> you added a single carriage return to my document. Thank you. Very useful. I will make sure that the first thing I do after perishing is a uh, pure awkward silence. And worth noting that... Kisu will not be looking at chat, um, so she will have no idea what's me saying things and what's y'all saying things. So isn't that fun? <laughs> that jar made me think of a country song. I mean, yeah, it's that kind of instrument. Uh, you hear a lot of um, jaw harp and like bluegrass and stuff. Bluegrass, blue shield. Got him watch party night. Okay. Okay, I can work with that. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, that's interesting. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. I have to remember that that doesn't always shift. The prompt doesn't always shift. Okay, we're good. Um, I set up this command super last minute, and I'm honestly pretty pleased with myself at how well it worked. What? Is 
there. See, I wish. I can just reload it. There we go. Before I make it, Lauren, do you have Castle Crasher? I do not have Castle Crasher, I don't believe. I mean, these are all... A lot of these are date ideas, which are great. Um, but these aren't things that we'll be able to do tonight, unfortunately. Alright, Mina, that's closer to what we were looking for here. We want... Something I can try and do tonight at this lovely restaurant. Oh, oh mine. Oh my. I think someone might be here. Alright, y'all, I need to I need you to keep it cool. Remember, goal is get lucky, get our souls eaten. And I'm trusting you all. Do your best so I can do my best, which is really your best because I have no game. So let's see how well it goes, huh? Let's not panic. Hello, hello. Hi! Oh my god. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let's see if we can't get you in here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Uh, I'm working on it. I got you. I got you. You got it. I realize I should have done okay. a smoother okay. transition. <laughs> Here. Y'all, I'm going to be uh, right back. I'm going to do the, the gentle Norn thing and let Kisu into the restaurant and help her to our table. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Three, two, and 
All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, are we? Look are we, we good? Have, yes. Where it's. <gasps> hi. Hi, Hello. everyone. I'm All here. All right. I'm, I'm gonna turn to towards my lovely date. Hi, Kisu. <laughs> You know, I'm so excited. Me too. It's we've been married for a little while, and <laughs> we're just on our first day. You know, the order's a little <laughs> out of order, but that's you know that's charming in its own way. Every it's always going to be a little different, right? Yeah, it's giving like <clears throat> it's giving when like you know Christians pick out their their partners mm -hmm. way before the mm -hmm. first date. It's giving that. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. We had a moth-arranged marriage, and that happens. A moth-arranged marriage? Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been wrong, though. Every single person she's picked out has been great. This is true. The The, the average quality of life is exceptionally high, so... I yeah, think so it, I don't... She's not wrong ever. Yeah. But yeah, I hope you like this restaurant that I picked out. Seems like a classy enough place. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's very nice. It's uh, it looks very fancy. They got stuff hanging from the ceiling, and we got some uh, what is that next to us? What is in front of our drinks? Um, I believe that is just a big old plate of rose petals. Okay, okay. Is that for us to eat? Am I supposed to be eating that? I can eat that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think here, no, I'll 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 eat some too. It's gotta be what 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 it is to do, right? <laughs> appetizer, yeah. appetizer. That's a, it's a beautiful appetizer. <laughs> yeah, mmm, delicious. Mmm. Love me some mm, rose petals. Absolutely yummy. I do like rose as a flavor. It is quite nice. <laughs> yeah. I think ro are roses actually edible? Yeah. They use rose in a, as a flavor in all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it's totally normal what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's been it's been. I don't know. Nice little bit of setup. There's a few other yeah, ideas that I had great. thought we for. Got some, you went ahead and ordered us some uh, champagne. Is that mm -hmm. champagne or white wine? It's definitely an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> and it's probably sparkling. It's. It's. Are you sure it's? Uh, it could be pee. Never, not on the first date. <laughs> not on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> I usually try to, you know, keep that as a third date thing. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. So. No, that <laughs> makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Second is like I'm still testing the waters. Third is there's definitely piss in there. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> you know, it's a fun little, it's a fun little spicy surprise for the for for date three, or for date four. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Look forward to it. Well, we'll see how tonight goes. Actually, true, true. there was a couple other date ideas that I had, but I wasn't sure. I seemed, It seemed like the restaurant, the dinner was like the classic and really was the way to go. But I wonder what you might think of some of the other ideas that I had. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. So what do you think about a Yu-Gi-Oh date night? Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe watch some Yu-Gi-Oh. We're going to duel? Oh. We're going to duel. We're going to duel for okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I don't think maybe it's a little presumptuous. Maybe it's a little over overconfident to think about future dates on date one. But I don't know. I find fun in planning these sorts of things. And it's, I think I love how you're like, it's pretty presumptuous to think we're going to go on more than one date, even though we're married. Even, even though, though we're, we're married. <laughs> <laughs> even though, yes, we are. Well, you know, I've already had... You know, full full disclosure, full transparency with my my history. Uh, I do have one wife that I've had eight divorces with, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a never a sure thing. But okay, fair enough, fair enough. I don't know if you've uh, know if you've heard about the the Sarah situation right now. No, I haven't. Oh, honestly, thought you were talking about Rosie. Rosie gets into a lot of divorces. No, uh, Rosie and I have actually managed. We're we're rock solid so far. Oh, okay, um, fair enough. I genuinely thought you were talking about Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's more surprising that Mimi and I haven't had a divorce at this point. Um, I feel like we've had we've, we've come close. Although, I don't think I'm ever. Mm. 
I don't think I ever get, get that close. I'm, <laughs> maybe because I don't stream enough. <laughs> no. It's also because you don't uh, pester Mimi the way that I do. Mm, that's true. That's true. No, Sarah and People I. People do had... love to pick at Mimi. Mm, it is because she's grump. She's a little cinder and it's cute. It is. It is. I agree. I agree. But you don't need to be grumpy. You're just cute. So I don't Aww, know. Thank you. <laughs> I think you might be the more pleasant date. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't tell Mimi that. <laughs> she's not here. She doesn't need to know. Fair enough. Fair enough. She's gonna bust up in here and be like, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> right out of it, I heard that. <laughs> well, she doesn't want me to run my mouth like that. She can make me stop. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's still. I think yeah, a Yu Gi Oh date sounds fun. Are hell we, yeah. So you said we're dueling? Yes, absolutely. I I managed to find a, a network, little networking thing in Kaiba Corp. I have, you know, maybe some dual discs on the way. I just oh, thought okay, it would be nice. kind of neat. Um, and it kind of, you know, rather than think about like, oh, where do we go at the end of the night? The answer is the Shadow Realm. So it seems like <laughs> a pretty, you know, it plans itself out. I I had, when I was younger, I had such a crush on the Pharaoh. Oh, really? <laughs> on Yami? Or on yes. a, a Tem? I think yeah, he's... well, I guess, well, Yami would be who he currently is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. -hmm. Yeah. Like, yes. I, I don't know what it was. I think it was the BDSM outfit. I was like, whoa. I mean, <laughs> that does doing do something to me. <laughs> that does do a lot, doesn't it? I had. Who did I have a crush on in Yu Gi Oh? I want to say my. My Valentine. My was cute. Yeah. And, um. Dark Magician one? Girl. <laughs> uh. My, is my the one that has the harpies? Yes. Um, oh, she... yeah, no, she could step on me. Hell yeah. <laughs> I see she... a kind yes. of... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, for a moment I was debating, I was like, which one's my? And I'm like, is that the one with the harpies or is that the other one? The other main girl, but I couldn't set in my head who it was. Oh, that was uh, Taya. Taya! Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my... I. When it comes to fictional women, you get me a bitchy blonde woman, I'm just like, damn... I wish she was being bitchy at me in particular. <laughs> Honestly, she can beat me up. She can take my life point. She can, you know, in like mm -hmm, that one mm -hmm. arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! where they have the stars, she can take all my stars. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, she's uh pretty good. There's I don't know, that yeah. show has a lot of a lot going on for it. I didn't really I keep really up. I really like Dark Magician Girl too, yeah. It was Dark oh, Magician yeah. Girl, and I had a thing for Yami. Every time, I would, my heart would like drop when I saw him. I'd be like, oh my god, he transformed. I had no appeal for actually Yuki. I was like, get him off. I'm not trying to look at him. <laughs> I don't need this second rate duelist. I I need the Pharaoh. Thanks, the Pharaoh? I was like, oh. I, a Tem, though, I also, I'm also a Tem. A Tem got me howling. Hell yeah. Although the question is, what about? I'm thinking of the other men on that show. Kaiba. There's Kaiba and there's Bakura. Oh, that's his brother, isn't it? Uh, Bakura is the white-haired kid. Oh. Mokuba's yeah, uh, Kaiba's brother. Honestly, I want to fight him a lot. He, I, I want to fight him so bad. Hmm. <laughs> you want to fight just, Kaiba? Yeah. No, not Kaiba. I want to fight Makura. I like he just looks fightable. <laughs> <laughs> like fist fight, not a, not uh -huh, a duel, uh -huh. like fist fight. Oh yeah, Denny's at three a.m. I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, I don't know what it is, but there's a specific beef that I have with characters with like white hair that want to play God. That I just honestly, I gotta fight him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Griffith from Berserk. Uh, is it like Ry Ryuk Rio from Devilman? Oh yeah, I yeah. Fight yeah. Him. What I mean, I? I know he is actually a god, but I, wanna, <laughs> I actually want to fight him. So is Griffith. <laughs> I mean, Griffith uh, deserves a lot of pain. Um, <laughs> Griffith deserves a, a good like fight. Griffith did nothing wrong, and I'm like, I feel like we didn't want, read the same manga. Like, yeah, I feel uh, like we just weren't there. I think if if you see someone going that hard to bat for Griffith, that's a pretty comfy red flag for me. Where I'm just like, hmm, right. hmm. You seem like the type that unironically idolizes Rick from Rick and Morty. <laughs> yes. yes you know what i mean <laughs> yeah rick white hair see i would fight him i'd fight him mm -hmm. 
No offense. I know people are down bad for him, but I would fight him. I mean, Bow the Whale is not in this chat. I, I think we're keep safe. Keep in mind, too, I don't think I would win any of these fights. I think I would die in all these situations, but I'm, I would want to at least try. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. No, I don't. There's plenty of fights <laughs> that I would pick that I'm like, oh, I'm not winning this, but, you know, if I fought Yotsuyu from Final Fantasy XIV, I wouldn't win that fight, but I would enjoy losing, and then that's good enough. Although that's kind mm -hmm. of different. She doesn't really deserve the fight. I just, I just want her to kill me. It's fine. <laughs> And, you know, I don't know. I, he I heard you maybe like to eat souls or something, but it it that's not a big deal. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I like do for funsies. I just thought that was kind of a neat thing is all. It, it's only to be fair that I only souls a stupid man. Mm. OK, it's very, it's OK, only, it's easy. It's easy. I get nervous around women. So like I find it really hard to persuade them mm -hmm. to eat them. Men are just really dumb. They're just really easy to eat their souls. I can be dumber. Because <laughs> <laughs> they fall for it. Because, you know, I got to I just all I got to do is stick the stick the chest a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. get it going. Absolutely. And easily they just follow me back into the shrine and then I eat them. Yeah, there's. Well, there's, you know. There's an art to seduction, and for some people, the art is uh, maybe more of a crayon drawing and a little less of uh, uh, an acrylic painting, we'll say. <laughs> true, true. And then when it, but yeah, when I when I've tried to do it with women, it's just I get really nervous because they're so pretty and I don't know what to say. And then I, then I start getting shy. <laughs> Aww, so cute. And you're so pretty. I don't know what you need to be nervous for. It's happening right now. See, I wouldn't be able oh, to do you. I wouldn't no. be able to eat you. Well, maybe I can change your mind by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren goes missing at the end. Lauren goes missing, but everyone would know that I'm fine with it. That's what's You're important. <laughs> <laughs> you died doing what you loved. Mm hmm <laughs> Also, so I wanted to do one uh, mention, I guess, one more thing or two more people from Yu-Gi-Oh! And then I had, wanted to talk about one of my other... Um, I guess two other, I had two other date ideas that maybe I was curious what your thoughts would be. Okay. So, first of all, we did forget to talk about Joey and Tristan, which I'm kind I, of like, eh. But. They're mid, but I love Joey's accent. <laughs> I, he, I would want him to be my friend, but I would not want to like... Brooklyn Rage. Use yeah, non-binary, yeah. huh? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Baby the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kaiba, I don't want to be a furry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would want Joey to be to be my friend. I don't even think I'd give him a pity fuck. I'm, I'm gonna be real. That's, I don't even think I'd do that. That's cold. That's kind of cold, but that's also yeah. No, I get you. I get you. Because <laughs> then I would have to hear the accent like mm. bouncing up and down. I don't know if I can handle that. I honestly, I just really think that I like him as sort of a, a wretched man to Kaiba. Like, mm -hmm. I know people ship Kaiba and, and Yugi, but I don't want that. I want the, the just terrible, odious power struggle of Kaiba and Joey. <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> I like my men wretched and pathetic. I think it's a good look on them. Mm, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I like my men um, mm -hmm. big and stupid. Very nice. <laughs> Maybe I a little wolf love, shaped. I love a good himbo. Maybe a little wolf shaped. Um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, next question. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Well, so there's there is Yu-Gi-Oh night, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know you watch a lot of anime, and I know we have a couple of shows that we have in common. But I am actually not sure. Are you a Gundam person? Are you a Gundam kind of fox? I, I am. I don't know much about Gundams. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> kind of weird to talk about since we are on a date. But um, one of the first things that Conker did before <laughs> we started dating to talk to me was he sent me, he just sent me pictures of Gundams that he had built. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and it look. was on the days of Tumblr too. So he sent them on Tumblr, I think, or Skype or one or the other. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what do you want me to say to this? Honey, I'm Polly. It's fine. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough. Well, I didn't know. You know, some people were like, why would you talk about that on our date? 
That's one of those things, though, that is kind of funny about um, being polyamorous and being on a date is that, like, a lot of these sort of standard etiquette for those kinds of things, you don't really know what the... There's no, you know, there's no handbook for it. So you're kind of like, well, wait, True. is it rude to talk? I don't care. And if someone else is poly, maybe they won't care and it's fine. And as far as I've experienced, that seems to be the case. But I, I know some people have like, like you said, like their own kind of like things like it. Like some people mm -hmm. mind and some people don't mind. And it's kind of like, it's pretty flexible. Yeah. But yeah. Oh shit! I Everyone's... dropped something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my silverware in my lap. Mm -hmm. Well, we can <laughs> we can get some new ones. It's fine. <laughs> uh, are we ordering? Um, you know I haven't seen too much of the wait staff. You didn't have any souls on the way here, did you? Um. Uh no, I had like maybe one yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'll have to see what happened to them. I we should have been getting some food. Well, worst comes to worst, we can we can make do with our rose petals for now. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I can snack on these. But you were saying Gundams though. Oh, I was just gonna ask. Do you think uh I don't know. Do you think they're perhaps like Transformers? Right? Well, they're giant robots for sure. <laughs> um generally the Transformers are more uh, sentient in their own thing. Oh, Gundams are piloted. You, they get into it. They have pilots. Yeah. Kind of, it's, it's, I've seen Evangelion, so that's the closest thing I can get to it. I mean, Evangelion has a lot of a lot in common with Gundams, so that's not off base. Um, but I was but thinking the, the, maybe we could have the a little... The Avas are like monsters, Ooh, go ahead. aren't they? Yeah. yeah the, the Avas are still like alive. The Avas are like biological robots and also... They're like, kind of sexy. They're, they're kind of <laughs> hot. They're, they're kind of based hot. off of... Well, at least Ava Unit One is as a hundred percent. It's a milf. She's fine as hell. Yeah, <laughs> actual milf robot. Um, she really is. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was just thinking we could have like a little Gundam watch party. That was the idea. Okay. Okay. Like maybe maybe pick a show. I can I can find one that's nice and accessible. I feel like I feel like personally I would show someone G Gundam if they don't know any Gundam because G Gundam is pretty atypical for Gundams, but it's also a lot of fun. And, you know, a, a lot of the Gundam mainline stuff is really good, but it's so, like, focused on war is bad and so focused on, like, um, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. It's kind of a downer. So I think for a watch party, you'd want something light and fun. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. And then the third thing is maybe less of a specific date, maybe more of a little, I don't know, maybe an activity for later even, but... I just think it would have been nice to, uh, I don't know. What do you think about cuddling and watching Courage the Cowardly Dog? <laughs> I love Courage. That, that show was like my shit. I think it's really nice. I think it's a fun show. It's weird, too. I like... It I is so odd. Mm -hmm. It is so... I love it. It was like, um, like growing up. Um, since my mom doesn't speak like, um, like she speaks English, but like sometimes <laughs> like in tv shows you know like they talk fast so sometimes like people who are like learning english it it, mm -hmm. it like comes to them kind of hard to understand people um so but courage was one of those shows that we could watch and i didn't have to explain that was also a thing too if she like we we're watching a show together she would ask me a lot of questions because mm -hmm. sometimes she wouldn't understand what's happening but courage was one of those shows we could i could put on as a kid and know that my mom would just understand it was like so much of like a, of a visual thing because courage doesn't speak a ton yeah, yeah, no, so, that's actually really sweet. That's yeah, that's so, so cute. I always have a really like, really soft memory with courage. Whenever I think about it, I think about stuff like that. So I love courage. I'm ten out of ten. I love that. Hell yeah! Well, that sounds like that's a that's a yes on the the cuddle and courage date. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> I love it. I love that idea. I love all these ideas. I love how you thought all about all this. This is so cool. Yeah. No. It, it, it's. It took me, I had to think very hard to come up with all these by myself. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were just going to have a dinner day. I didn't know we had activities planned. I mean, I like to have, you know, I'm, I'm always the type to have a lot of backup plans because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're planning a date for someone, you're only giving your best guess and it's okay if that guess is a little off base. And I like to have other guesses in line 
just to, you know, cover my bases. Although, I don't know, I, I like to think that I'm just prepared. Do you think that's maybe a little too, like, that's too much? Is that overwhelming? Or is that just, no. like... No! I think options are great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they say in psychology <laughs> mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that giving choices to people makes them really happy. So, no, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're having a good time. Because, you know, I always, I always have to worry about... I, I'm always, you know, worried about making sure people are having a good time, and I think that it's, it's hard, you know, everyone's into such different things, especially when you get into, into VTubers, we're all, you know, a kind of person, and that we kind are, of person can be into so many different things. True, true. But, you know, we do have at least one show that we both, we're both huge fans of. Um, yeah. Because we both have I mean Mona Guitari. Yeah, I would say we both like we we both love Mar Mona Guitari. That shit's uh, good. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of that. I could talk about the show forever. I used to watch like all these different like YouTube videos, t just breaking down and analyzing that show. There's just so much to unpack in that show. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, no, there's a there's there's so much going on with that. Um, it's it's actually kind of wild how much like, and it's you know there's always stuff that like later on that's maybe a little like ooh but there's so much good in that yeah, show yeah there there's some there it's there's some spots that i'm not exactly like fond of <laughs> and i kind of feel like yeah it's a little sus but i mean if you i have to look past that because the writing is amazing for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh 100 i think it's just a bad director choice of you sometimes the director made some questionable ideas yeah, I um, I do say I will say that I, I really appreciate that a lot of what they do with Monogatari in terms of the characters is the arcs they have are very like not in directions you'd expect, especially oh, with yeah, like for with, sure. with like Tsubasa, because like I will say that her arc to, to really grasp her full arc you have to watch the Kizu movies, which are so good, but like they're um, amazing. They're they're, they're, my, they're absolutely my favorites. Yeah, no, and it's like. I got to watch those in theaters, which was I was really happy about. But like, one, let me tell you, the energy uh, for some of the hornier parts of that movie, those movies, um, in a whole room full of nerds is sure something. Um, because imagine, they're... I cannot imagine watching that movie with all those lewd scenes. With people. <laughs> yeah, because like Hanukkah was getting thirsty, and everyone's just like, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, this is. Oh, oh, this is some energy. Oh, my. Yeah, but I agree completely. Hanikawa, I feel Everything's like her like... character is just so complex. And it's just every season, I feel like her character evolves more and more. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, too, how she's and, and you know, Araragi says this immediately, like, she's too good for me. And she is too good for him. <laughs> she really is. And I used to like when I first watched it and I was watching through it. I low-key did not like Araragi and Senjukahara because I always thought, I always liked Hanikawa and, and Araragi, but after finishing it and kind of pondering it, I was like, actually, she is way too good for him, and Araragi does not deserve, nobody deserves her. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is one of those things, though, that, like, it's really hard to watch Kizu and not root anyway, because you're just like, yes, fuck, yeah. I just want Kizu, her to win. Kizu makes me want to root for her. And root for them. Like, yeah, so you end up you end up rooting for them anyway, but it's just like it's hard not to be like, well, wait a minute. What I hmm. don't think I rooted for Sendra Kahara until um for one when uh Hanikawa stays at her house and then the episode where they go on the date where they're like bowling and they go to like the observatory. And that's when I was like, Okay, I like her. But mm -hmm. it took me all the way up till then. Before that I was like this bitch annoying. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. I brought. So it looks like our our first. Uh, this is this is our, the. Does finally, that bell pepper have a tail? This is um, it's not a big deal. This is a Carolina Reaper. Um, oh. So this is uh the spiciest pepper in the world. Um, oh okay. 
And uh, yeah, if you want to, they, they have really big ones here. I, I don't know where they grow these. It's actually the, the ones that I've gotten before. And I have actually eaten, like, I have actually eaten one of these before. Um, although the one I had was a dried one, um, which was smaller and also not as fresh because it was preserved. But uh, yeah, they're, they're quite fun. So feel free to, to dig in. Oh, okay. I love that. I love how <laughs> they didn't take her order, but they just dropped this off. I, I God, sorry. I'm, I'm like... I do have one of the dried ones. I could just eat that now. <gasps> That's a dangerous idea. <laughs> I am kind of low-key a disgrace to Koreans. I am not a big fan of spicy food. Like, I'll eat it. Like, I'll eat, but, like, super spicy, I just, I can't. I mean, it's just... Also, I am also not a, I'm a Korean that doesn't like kimchi. I feel like that also makes me a disgrace. No, you're fine. You're fine. Look, I... It's, I, it's you know, but it's like the food. It's like the like you know, Americans love burgers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you would think that I would like kimchi, but there's something about it. It's an acquired taste. There's something wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with. I mean, I think so. Like this isn't quite the same in terms of cultural stuff, but like I grew up in Maryland, and Maryland has uh, a lot of seafood because it's on the ocean and um, yeah. well, on the bay and the ocean, on the bay. We'll say um. So, you know, lots of crab, lots of uh, rockfish, um, all sorts of things. And um, the, I don't really like seafood that much. Mm. Um, I'll eat sushi. I will eat. Um, I have to hype myself up to eat sushi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like sushi, but like the texture, I have to mentally prepare myself to oh, be ready for it. Yeah, I just don't really like. <laughs> I, I just don't go for the fishy taste as much. So, like, I can do sushi, but cooked fish, not usually for mm -hmm. me. Um, it's just not my thing. It is, because I grew up in Maryland, though, I am able to, uh, you put a steamed crab in front of me, I can tear that thing apart. Just because I've had to pick so much crab meat out of crabs, even if I wasn't eating them. Um, that's just how the, the, the family goes. Mm, fair, okay. But yeah, that's one of those things. I get you. Like, and also, like, I, so... To get more into like, I guess, I guess eth ethnicity and and cultural heritage beyond just being American, um, my family is primarily Danish, and we've been to Denmark, and I've had traditional Danish food, and it's like, fuck, it's a lot of fish, god damn it, it <laughs> and it didn't really, you. it's yeah, it's like oh boy, pickled herring, haha, <laughs> mmm, <laughs> mmm, thanks. For the most part, I love most Korean dishes and like, um, like dokboki. It's like it's spicy and it's so good and it's like um, it's like a street food and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, and I've I've recently really enjoyed pickled radish, especially in like kimbap. It's really good too. But I just can't get behind. I can't get behind kimchi. I don't know. It's like either I think it's the texture thing again, and it's also sour. And so I don't think my brain's ever prepared to eat it. I get you. I get you. Yeah, it's, it's like a spicy sour. It, it, it's it's tough when it's like I don't know. The texture can get really out of hand. I I enjoy the taste of kimchi, but I agree with you on the texture. Um, and sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it's um, it's strong in a way that I'm not prepared for. In the same way that like I've right. had I've had wasabi that's really uh fresh and that can be very similarly um like that yeah let's see actually so this is perhaps maybe rushing things a little bit or again we'll, we'll, we'll say out of order but this place does have an excellent dessert menu what kind of dessert would you like um what's on the menu um well i think I think they have it's one of those weird ones where like they have like a few suggestions of like cake or ice cream or whatever, but I think if you just ask, they probably can make it happen. What's what's your go-to dessert? What, what do you like? Uh, I I really like a cobbler. I really like, Ooh, like peach cobbler. Cobblers are delicious. I love a I love a peach cobbler. I don't order desserts very often, oh, but yeah. if I see there's peach cobbler on them on the dessert menu, I'm like Oh, God, yeah. I'm gonna need to order that with the ice cream, with the scoop of ice cream. Yeah, no, I um, 
that's that's an excellent choice. I I think cobbler is kind of underrated as a dessert, you know. Facts. Where's where's the cobbler love? It's so weird because <laughs> I also can't read chat. <laughs> so I'm expecting people to be like, yeah, I like cobblers too, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a shame that no one's talking in chat. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no, the, we've, we've seen some. We've seen. That. Let's see. See some ice cream cake for dessert from a certain rat in chat. <laughs> certain stinky rat in chat. Who was also uh, talking about uh, gunpla based Riz earlier. <laughs> okay, that sounds like him. Mm. That sounds like a certain rat. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as far as dessert goes, I really, I'm a huge dessert person. It is a, I have a huge sweet tooth. Um, but I like desserts with more of a bitter edge to them. I think tiramisu is probably one of my favorites in terms of really fancy constructed desserts. But like, just a really simple dark chocolate ice cream or like a chocolate mousse is just delicious for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just really works. It really works for, for, it's something I'm into, you know? I've never had one, but they always look really good. Like, I always have wanted to try one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I don't know. If if ever there gets a chance where we can go, you know, on another date to maybe somewhere in New York, I can probably arrange for some... There's there's definitely places that have nice tiramisu up here. We have a, we have a lot of the authentic Italian uh, bakeries and stuff. They're really nice. Ooh, this one's really good. Yeah, there's actually, no, there's actually one in particular that we used to, when we, you know, before inflation got, made it a little too much to have regularly as a, now it's more of a very, very special kind of thing. But, I mean, if you were to come and visit, it would be a very special time. So, um, oh. I think, yeah, it would be a perfect time to order some dessert. And they have, they sell like pints of authentic gelato. And it's, oh, it's amazing. And the gelato flavors are just like, they're excellent. They're so good. Um, really big fan. Yeah, let's see. What kind of uh, let's see. What's your what's your go to ice cream flavor? My go to is, hmm, I like a good I like a good chocolate. I do like um, I like coffee, but I get kind of picky about coffee. A lot of mm -hmm. coffee ice cream overcompensates in terms of sweetness, um, mm -hmm. and doesn't really let the coffees. Um, like, like you don't want bitterness. To, yeah, I want a little. I want it to actually taste like a coffee that I would drink. Um, mm -hmm. There's a particular flavor of uh, Ben and Jerry's that they, it's a cold brew, and it's I think it's like a collaboration with some coffee company. But like, it's perfect. It's brilliant. It's so good. Um, but so like coffee and chocolate are like my go-to. But I'm pretty. I don't know anything that looks good to me. I'm always excited to try new desserts. It's it's just something I like. Um, but yeah, let's see. Oh, let's see now. Uh, I think I see the waiter coming by again. <gasps> oh my, what's this? That's such a fancy looking cobbler. Here, let's 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 move. Uh, we'll... <laughs> we're, I think we're done with that. Creature. Yeah, here, we'll get you. Oh, thank and... you. There you are. I'm so excited. Oh, it looks so good. It's breaded and everything. Oh, it looks delicious. Uh, I'm a I'm a pistachio kind of gal. I like pistachio ice. I like nuts. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Actually, could you, do you want to feed me a bite of that peach cobbler? Absolutely. Um, I would. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my sleeve's a little heavy, so I can't really. No, no, up, it got there. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, uh, should have. A little just, let's just. Um... Ah. <laughs> it's incredible i took one bite out of it through the side but the dish seems to be fine the dish is made out of sugar glass as it turns out yeah yeah it's all good it's all good what a fancy presentation at this restaurant yeah this, this restaurant's going off they're popping off <laughs> yeah oh there's just a lot of um there's such a lot of good desserts out there but I don't know. I like it's so interesting to me that it's like I would, 
I'm always on the hunt for like interesting food or like um, really like things I haven't tried before or um, I try to show people things they haven't had before um, yeah. or go to like local specialties if I'm taking someone out. But like, you know, it, it's one of those things that um, I think when it comes to dates and food, I think a lot of people really want to like a lot of people emphasize like, oh, yeah, you want to, you know, keep the price in mind and you want to keep in mind like um, the vibe of the place and you want to keep this that and the other in mind and I'm just like yeah but if I take them to my favorite Japanese curry place and they really enjoy the Japanese curry I think that's a win personally see people think about that yeah I mean I was always told like you have to be like oh make sure you're not picking the places too expensive or too cheap um my mom's my mom's also a person that's very uh, focused on appearances and um oh oh my we have some little raid hi we were raid hi Yes, hi, welcome in. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Lauren Haley, the Norn VTuber, and I'm here on a date with my lovely wife, Kisumi VT. Let me give you a shout out real quick, Aries. Aww. Hi, Raiders. Yes. We're on a date. I got some peach cobbler. Yes. <laughs> and Kisu can't hear this, but if you do exclamation point date and then type some text, you can give me some suggestions for the date. I need help. She's very pretty. Help. <laughs> anyway, yes. Um, it's hi, Aries. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're about Come at me. I'm eating this peach cobbler. Mm -hmm. Please I'm enjoy. I'm busting this shit up. I'm, I'm messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I have my whole face in it right now. Mm, I'm an animal. It's so attractive. <laughs> you look so I mean, cute I'm like that. I am an animal. <laughs> I do love that kind of that energy of like you have an animal character in a show and they're they, they act very very human like up until like something like they eat and they just go full feral and it's just like adorable. Yeah, I'm just like ripping shit up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm chewing on the tablecloth. You're doing that. <laughs> you're doing that that thing where you rather than put it further in your mouth, you bite it and then sort of throw it up and catch it further back into the mouth. You know <laughs> that that move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which. I honestly do that in real life sometimes. Uh, I like to give it a good uh, one. You know, there's like a few scraps left on the plate. I like to give it a good dump truck. You know, put the plate to your mouth and scrape it all in. Absolutely. Give it a good dump truck. Hell, in Japan, that's that's good manners, depending on what you're eating. Because, like, I remember just when I was... I Because I lived there for a little bit. And, um, yeah, we would, be, we would eat, like, our, our lunch sets and... Um, the students would be like, oh yeah, yeah, make sure you're eating all the rice. Don't let, no grain of rice left behind. Oh. Disrespectful to the, to, to, to the rice gods. And this was a kid that was from a more rural, uh, Hiroshima, but, um, like in that area. And yeah, no, the, um, yeah. So you, you just hold it up to your mouth and shovel the rest in. That's how you get the rest of it. Did you, when you were in Japan, I don't know if this is a thing that's in Japan or if it's just a Korean thing, but did you have to drink corn water? No, um, I, I mean, there might have been some, but I never had any. Um, oh my gosh, I swear on God, every single restaurant that we went to, they would, the default was corn water, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, please, I just want water, can I please get water? I think corn water is like supposed to be good for your metabolism and like good for hmm. like eating dinner and stuff. But like it has it has a taste because it's corn <laughs> water and I just wanted water. And so I didn't know like is that a thing in Japan or is it just a Korean thing? I didn't see it you know, in the Japan. Two are so, they're mm -hmm. not exactly the same thing because they're but they're closely related since you mm -hmm. know Korea has been conquered by Japan and China. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, cultural exchange, whether that's through peaceful or less peaceful means, for sure. Um, <laughs> and yeah, no, I never I never noticed any corn water. Um, we did drink a shit ton of barley tea, though. Um, so much barley tea, uh, because we were there during the summer. So we did, like, the whole Tanabata thing. Um, yeah. Th that was fun. But no, I never had a corn water. I do want to go, I think it would be super fun to go to Korea at some point, just because, like... It is different. It is very different. And I would love to see all the differences and try the food. Um, I don't know how much 
authentic Korean food I can claim to have had. I've had some really good Korean food. Um, I've had some amount of Korean home cooking, but I would love to go to Korea and just like, I want to get at the street food. I love street food. The street food is amazing. Like, oh, it's so good. My mom was from, she's from Seoul. So Ooh. like when we went, we like stayed in Seoul. So it's, it's pretty good because, you know, that's the, that's basically the heart of Korea. And, um, so you get to like enjoy like all the street food that's there and all the Hell different yeah. like um, things that they have in there. And it's, it's, it's great. And it's so, it's kind of interesting because it is one of those like cities that is super modernized and has the skyscrapers and then all of a sudden there's like a temple in the middle of it and it's just it's so odd to see like a temple just sitting in the middle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that is uh, so at least that much i experienced in japan a little bit where you'll see like a shrine out of nowhere and you're like oh neat and you'll be like what a cute little shrine that's just like nestled in the middle of this urban area and you'll just be like damn check it out it's usually got some interesting history um, Japan also will have like you'll be in a shopping arcade in Japan and you'll go down this alley and you'll be like oh there's actually like a tree growing through the ground here and a little shrine tucked into this like nook in the in that's the... so cute yeah they're they're really cool um, I remember one that we went to um, was actually a it was a shrine for honoring ancestors but more than that for um Basically, it was a very grandparents-focused kind of shrine, and my uh, grandmother had just passed away, so I just had, like, I don't know, I had a moment. Um, and as much as I'm able to, you know, connect to that, but, like, it was just... kind of surreal having that emotional moment in a shopping arcade. Um, like, there was a literal video game arcade maybe a block away. It was That's, just... I it's so it's so interesting how that happens. I don't think all right, I don't think there's as many like shrines uh, as like Japan might have. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's still regardless, it's still kind of it's just it's so interesting to see it just in the middle of like somewhere you wouldn't expect. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's interesting. But still, maybe maybe if I ever make it to uh to Seoul, you can show me around. Absolutely. I do want to go to Japan one day, though. Oh, I mean... Well, we can show each other around. in Japan, but I totally also want to, want to visit the more busier parts. That's, of that's course, of course. Thing. I can My show you... Abandoned Woods. Mm -hmm. We're not Abandoned Woods. It's, mm -hmm. it's an abandoned shrine, shrine in the middle of the woods. So, I mean, I don't really get out and often to see many people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that would be, actually be really fun if... You know, you took me around Seoul, and then I took you around my the parts of Japan that I'm familiar with, because I'm familiar with um, the Kanazawa area um, in Ishikawa-ken. So, like, not really the big touristy areas, although I've been to the big touristy areas, and they are a lot of fun. But, um, actually, yeah, the, um, it's, it, it is, it's one of those things that I think it's fun to show people around Places that aren't necessarily like it's not like I grew up there, but like I have I have my connection to that place, but you know there's still potential to find more there, right? Like right. as much yeah. as I could show you around in um, Kanazawa, we could find something together, and that would be like I don't know, fun and special. I think that that would, be nice. would, yeah, for sure. So there we go. That'll be date number four. Date, date number four. We've already planned it. We've already got it lined up. <laughs> Very expensive travel. A lot of planning. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of planning, but day four is done. We're gonna go to both too. We'll just we'll just like hop between the two. Oh, that just made me realize that if if, if we're doing going with the date numbers, it's either it's either the visit to Japan and Seoul or the cuddle and watch courage where 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 the piss comes into play. So <laughs> I guess we'll have to find the moment. <laughs> um also, uh, <laughs> I forget. I don't actually know where it is. I just know it's in the more like a uh, rural part of Korea. We own like a uh, like a rice paddy farm, so we can always go to the farmlands too. Hell yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It was uh yeah. It's it's more secluded. There's just it's just nature and cows and rice paddies. That's literally all it was <laughs> when I when I went there. They had cows and um dogs. They had like 
They're they're not Shiba Inus, but they look like Shiba Inus. Ooh. Um, they're called. Uh, uh, hold on, I can tell you what they're called. I don't want to get confused because <laughs> there's a. I always get the dog name confused. Uh, the Akitas, perhaps. Uh, no, it's a it's a Korean breed of dog. Oh, oh, I see, I see. The Jindo. That's oh, what it looks like. interesting. They're called Jindos, and they look just like Shiba Inus, but they kind of have the like the nature of um. I'm trying to think. Maybe of like a like a Doberman, like super smart, is willing to do stuff, mm -hmm, unlike mm -hmm. the Shiba Inu that's willing to do nothing for you. <laughs> a Shiba Inu will absolutely let you die in a building. They don't care. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, no, the Jinda is like kind of the opposite, but looks just like it. Mm -hmm, Only mm -hmm. they're, I think they're bigger. You got some hydrates, so if you'd like to enjoy some not piss, that was a oh, great it's... time. I have my uh, Milton matcha tea from this morning. Oh, I shit. Drink. That sounds amazing. Uh, it might not be good, though, because it's it's from, like, it's, it's like, almost 12 hours years old. 12? Oh, my God. 12, 12 years old. Years, 12, <laughs> <laughs> 12 hours old, and uh, it's got milk in it, so I doubt it tastes good. Eh, I, I'm sure it's fine. And, hey, 12 years, that's, that's as long as it took to make Boyhood. Movies never take that long to make. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're, if, if. There was a movie that they made over the course of 12 years called Boyhood, and it's about the boy growing up over 12 years. It was the first movie to do that, I guess. Really? Yeah. And Does then... it, like, follow a kid around? Yep, basically. Um, but, like, it's one of those things that uh, there's, a, there's a YouTube channel that does, like, movie reviews and stuff, and they just kind of made it a bit out of the Boyhood. Nothing ever took that long to make. It took 12 years. That's it's, crazy. It's so fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, um, you watch a lot of, like, movie review type YouTube things. You watch. I used to love to watch this one YouTube channel called, I think, Spooky Rice. Hmm, interesting. And he basically would watch, like, um, uh, horror movies or, like, just, like, obscure uh suspenseful mm -hmm, horror-ish mm -hmm. movies so i don't want to say they're all horror because some of it would be like borderline like uh, snuff kind of stuff <laughs> but i would watch him and then his reaction basically because i don't mm -hmm, want to watch mm -hmm. it. i don't want to mentally scar myself like that so i'm watching this guy get mentally scarred instead and so he would give his like reviews about it and stuff and sometimes they were just like b-rated like horror movies and sometimes like i said it was the more like kind of disturbing stuff um, I really liked watching stuff like that. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, sometimes I go out of my way to find the most disturbing things to make myself feel something. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I get you. Um, yeah. No. Uh, like, I read Goodnight Pun Pun, you know. That's not too bad. Well, no, actually it was bad. Pun Pun made me cry <laughs> so much afterwards. I cried like a baby after Pun Pun. Aww. Actually, that's... So do you like to go for sad... When you're sad, do you like watching or listening to things that make you even more sad when i was younger i used to do that a lot when i like when i was a teenager i would it was kind of i feel like a bad coping mechanism because it made me feel worse usually mm -hmm. and so i would like go out of my way to find media that was sad because i guess i related to it but in terms it kind of um enabled me to even feel worse so i'm kind of more aware that i am kind of easily tricked into that thing that mindset so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i do try to like not do that if i am feeling bad because it'll make me feel worse i get um, you yeah but when i'm feeling okay in the mindset then i go read the disturbing stuff because i'm like yeah, i'll be all right yeah Pun -pun, i didn't know though going in it was going <laughs> to be bad like no one really warned me like conquer tried warning me being like you know just so you know there's some graphics out but the little stinky rat did not nearly tell me like everything i was going to get involved in with that one that that yeah that's sometimes it's hard to warn people with about a story where like you're oh you're like oh it gets fucked up but i can't quite quite Without spoiling it yeah, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to ruin it but at the same time you're like ah but it gets really um hmm hmm yeah yeah has there been any any like mangas or animes that made you cry oh plenty um 
I'm trying to think of the last, I don't cry. So the thing that gets me to cry the most easily is music. Um, mm. But, um, and there's a couple of video games that have gotten me. Um, Undertale got me, Bird Story got me. Um, but in terms of um, anime or manga, Made in Abyss made me cry. Um, Made in Abyss <laughs> has an absolute um, <laughs> gut punch Sorry. in it. I know we're on a date, but it just occurred to me. I'm like, we're literally on a date. I'm like, what has made you cry? I think that's a perfectly... <laughs> Look, I've had... Okay, I've literally had a first date where me and the other person basically swapped trauma stories. We walked around a park and just talked about the fucked up shit that brought us to who we are today. And I went on to date that person for a year and a half. So you know what? It's... Sometimes... Okay, okay. I'm gonna say, I just realized, I was like, dang, I just asked you what makes you cry on a first date. I mean, if you want to make me cry, I'm not against that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen Made of an Abyss. I've seen the art for it, but it's... I haven't seen it, seen it. The So I only watched the first season that they put out of the anime. Um... It's, I get some vibes I don't care for from some of the author's stuff. Um, sometimes there's there's things that maybe I'm being a bit prudish about in terms of the ways they depict the characters that are very, very young. Um, Ooh. But most of the time, it is not like that. And most of the time, it is a gorgeously animated show with beautiful world design, wonderful music, and... Just, it gets viscerally upsetting so quick in ways that are, like, good entertainment viscerally upsetting, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Like, I I don't want to spoil it, but... Um, yeah, there's... Um, actually, you know what? Here, I'll tell you what a scene... And I don't think... I, I couldn't say it in a way that really spoils the, the scope of how um, wild the scene itself actually is. Basically, a character uh, got a poison bite on their arm, and the other character's like, we're going to have to take that part of arm off. And they don't really have the tools to do that cleanly or well, nor the expertise to do it with what is available in a way that is clean or easy or quick. Um, and yeah, then the scene plays out, and you're just like, ah, oh, Oh my. Oh no. Um yeah, no, it is it is uh a good show. I will say though, it gets pretty wild pretty quick, so you know, one of those shows that maybe you know, if you're feeling shitty, don't don't go for Made in Abyss. It's not a it's not an uplifting show most of the okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it, it gets That's usually what hmm. I tell people with Pun Pun. I'm like, if you are like not feeling mentally well, don't read Pun Pun. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. don't just save yourself that. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only I don't even know if you could read it when you're stable though, but definitely don't read it if you're <laughs> feeling like your worst. Yeah, but yeah, there's a um there's a scene with a character death that really made me cry in Made in Abyss. Um I wanna say that Monogatari has made me cry at some point, but I can't exactly remember where. Um Sometimes I forget which which stories have or haven't made me cry. Um, I want to see from what a Katari. I don't think I ever cried to it. I think the closest I came is when Honeykana confession Honeykawa confesses her love. Yeah, and she's like having that really emotional moment, and she's like crying because she's like finally I can feel pain, and I don't know. There's something I think there's something not like crying in a sad way, but there's something like really just impactful in that moment. There's a catharsis, right? It's a release of something that has been stressing her out so much that she's uh, resorted to bloodshed um like uh, yeah no I absolutely love that episode. it's really like, good that, epi oh, that episode is so good yeah i also not not related to crying but with monogatari one of my favorite things is just i like that monogatari manages to achieve these very complicated relationships between his characters and the one that i really think about a lot is araragi and shinobu um oh yeah because whatever they got going on is fucked up 
but it's also like kind of I can't say it's good for either of them, but it's not just codependent either. It's it's there's a lot there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot of hurt and stubbornness and stuff that you're not really sure how you would it's move like, forward in that situation. They're they're like almost parasitical to each other. Like they mm -hmm. need each other. They like literally live off of each other. But at the end, when you see Kishot holding Araragi, there's something kind of beautiful about the relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Agreed. how Shinobu tells him uh, when they're in the bath together and she's like, at the end of the day, you can have all these relationships with these people, but you'll be stuck with me forever. Yeah. Which actually... I don't know. They have this really weirdly beautiful relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Actually, it kind of reminds me, especially the uh, in terms of you know, I'm going to be the one that's left. That sort of energy. Um, did you ever watch or read Negima? I don't think so. Oh, so um, the person that did Love Hina, um, you know, Love Hina was super popular, but really popular romantic comedy harem show. And the author was like, all right, I want to do a shonen. I want to do a fight in manga. And was told, no, you do another <laughs> rom-com harem show. So um, out of spite, he created the most insane setup of this like 10 year old magician who's being British British boy magician being sent to a Japanese school to teach and his class of 40 is supposed to be the, the full harem of like every kind of person every kind of character archetype you could think of including like robot vampire ghost um really That's and funny. so you know it, it goes along and it's a it's a rom-com or whatever but eventually Whatever force was keeping the author from making it a shonen uh, was no longer present, and he's like, "All right, this is a fighting <laughs> this is a fighting manga now." The main character gets <laughs> impaled through the chest. Um, graphically, he he gets better, but like it's just like immediately like okay, and you sort of run into this this scenario where like the the vampire girl in the class is just sort of like yeah, you have this energy of like. Whatever else is going on with those two characters and the, the people they know, they're going to be stuck with each other. And that's an interesting energy in whatever form it takes. That's the only reason huh. I was thinking of it. It's also interesting because Negima got adapted a couple times. One of them is ad was adapted by Shaft, though, so, you know, good animation. Because um, I, love, I love a Shaft. I love... You know what, I could change the phrasing on that, but I won't. Um, I love, I love, I love the, the animation <laughs> studio Shaft. Because um, they did, like, Madoka, and they did um, oh, okay. Monogatari. Um, they did... Uh, what else did they do? They did, they, they did a bunch of stuff. Um, basically, if you're watching an anime, and there's, like, a blackboard... Oh! Another raid! Oh my god. Hello, hello, hello! Great. Let me just give you a quick shout-out. Hi, Emmy! Um, let's see. There we go. Hi! Hi, Raiders! Hello, Raiders. Welcome in. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Lauren Haley, the Norn VTuber. And tonight's a very special stream where I'm on a date with my lovely wife, Kisumi. Um, Kisumi VT, otherwise known as Kisu. Um, we're just, we're just having a lovely time. Um, if you'd like to, if you'd like to help me out on the date, all you have to do is do exclamation point date and then type in a suggestion, and uh, we'll see if we'll see if I can get my soul eaten tonight. <laughs> you know, but yeah, welcome in. I hope your stream went uh, well. Not to disrupt our stream, but uh, for some reason, all my cats that live at my shrine are at the restaurant, and I need to let them in because they keep meowing at the door. <laughs> no problem. I'll be right back. Let of course, me, of let course, me of course. Them. That, that's perfectly fine. I can talk to our Raiders. How did your stream go? Did you have fun? Did you win? What did you play? Did you make friends? I need to know what this is about Shaft, too. Don't worry about it. Stop. We're just talking about Shaft. We're just talking about the animation studio Shaft. What else could I be talking about? <laughs> Was chill? Built some Gundams? Hell yeah! We were talking about Gumbla earlier. We, uh, we, we were discussing, we were talking about the inherent charms of wooing someone with all the gunpla you made. Huh? Nothing. No, we were just talking about, <laughs> just talking about gunpla. I'm actually, I do feel kind of, 
sad now that I don't have any pictures of the gunpla that I've made like easily on hand because I have made a few myself. I think the only you should have brought those. You should have brought those. That would have been an easy win on me. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, that's all you need is some pictures of some some Gundams that you've made. I let all the cats into the restaurant, by the way. I oh, hope that's all... okay. All, oh, that's fine. All that's my fine. cats from the shrine have followed me. That's the one thing about living in an abandoned shrine is you get uh, stray cats that just uh -huh. live with you. But I'm a cat person anyways. That's fine. Oh, yeah, same. I grew up with a lot of cats. Um, now, also, now that you mentioned that the sharing Gunpla is an easy win, now if I ever do build more Gunpla and want to share it, DM you pictures of it, I'm like, wait, is this sending the wrong message? Or is this sending the right message? It would be always sending the right message. <laughs> Obviously, it works. It's a So far, it's a one-for-one one of working. It's a pretty good track record. That's 100%. But yeah, the, uh, because I made, how many have I done? Three or four. Plus I did a Zoid once. I want to do more Zoids. There's just, I don't know. The Zoids are the animal ones, right? Yeah. Those are cool, I like those. Zoids are, um, so like, Zoids is a property that's like, kind of hard to track down. I wanted to watch some of the anime for it recently, and I discovered that it's not streaming anywhere. Um, really? Yeah. I kind of swore I saw it somewhere. Like uh, you might be able to get the the like a physical copy somewhere, but like in terms of streaming, yeah. it's I haven't seen it. It's it's basically no one's got the the streaming rights, um, because there is like uh, it's kind of fucked up though. I found out recently is that like with Zoids, um, so you know how Transformers they're just their own robots and they they yeah. and with Gundam they're piloted, but with Zoids oh. the answer is that they're kind of both. So there are wild zoids that are um, not like human intelligence necessarily, although I think they're pretty intelligent, but they're sentient robots. But they have all of their like zoidness it con converged into one thing called a zoid core. And humans found out that if they built an artificial zoid and put the zoid core in that, they could have a pilotable zoid that is a still a sentient creature. It's fucked up. It's really fucked up, and it's so just kind of like the Avas, where they're like they're sentient to an extent. Yeah, so it's just one of those things where it's like it's never addressed in because um, there's an anime for Zoids that's like a tournament arc kind of. The whole thing is just one big robot fighting I love tournament. tournament arc. Yeah, I, I love a tournament like... arc. Oh, I'm gonna say I'm popular, but I kind of hate tournament arc anime. <laughs> 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 they're they're fine. It's like, like, I can't watch Shaman King or anything. It's not for me. It's That's just fair. one big tournament arc. I mean, Shaman King has... I enjoy Shaman King, but it has, it has, I would say, a number of problems. There's, there's just only so many fight scenes I can take before I feel like my brain's going to explode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's fine. I think it's one of those things that, um... It's like, have you ever, have you ever done, like, D&D or Pathfinder? I have done D and D like once. Okay, so like, there's a lot of different <laughs> ways to do D and D, right? And um, you can do a D and D uh, with the focus on combat. You can do D and D with the focus on role play, with combat oh. minimized. So like, my group of my in my apartment, we have um, we have, I think everyone in our apartment DMs and runs Pathfinder games. And all of us tend to focus a bit more on roleplay. We like combat, and we like building characters for combat, but at the same time, we often resolve situations that are designed for combat without doing combat. Either talking people mm. down, or, you know, fixing whatever it was that was motivating them to fight us in the first place. Um, and I think that's one of those things that I think our group is really great for that. And there are other groups that just want to do a, a murder hobo meat grinder, and that's like, <laughs> that's totally fine. That's a valid way to play. It's not our way to play. Um, but, you know, I think that there's a lot of different answers to that. And I think that kind of enriches it. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I see. I have to do, you know. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. On our first date? Just so, like that? Sorry, I had something in my throat. <laughs> 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 you know, just had to get that out there. Maybe it was How overdoing. to give it out to the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Let's see if I can't. 
that's it. The, the wait staff's been very good to us so far. I'm going to see if I'm going to look at this menu, but let's keep talking. Um, I do want to say, and I know I've seen this outfit on you before, but it is beautiful. I think that it, it deserves to be said again. I, I love your outfit. It's very <gasps> the pretty. the one I'm wearing? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, which one? Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, the the, the, the black and the pink, which is a very lovely combination. Um, I think it's very pretty. And I just love the the rope bows and the bells and the the flowers. It's a great choice of flower, too. Oh, and thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. It was... Uh, it it was a, I mean, I guess if we could track, uh, it's kind of funny because I think, um, I think I I had been in development of my my little outfit for for years and it was kind of like an on and off thing and it's so funny to like go back and see original like concept that was way before I even knew, like. It's way before I could even thought about streaming and stuff, but it's so interesting to see, like, oh man, these are like my baby photos, and then to be here now, and like, mm -hmm. I still want to like improve, but I feel like I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I see other people's outfits, and I'm like, dang, they have really cute outfits, and I'm like, maybe my outfit's too simple, but I think there's something kind of nice about like simplicity too. Yeah, I mean, I think. Like, I, I think that there's something to be said for designs that have a lot going on. And I think that, but there's also equally something to be said for outfits that don't, that are more simple, just because, like, I think they translate to sort of dynamic posing more easily. And also, I think sometimes that can be a, I don't know, sometimes I just think that simple design can be a strength. Like, True. yeah, that was one of the things that I learned when I was character designing especially with vtubing is that since especially because you do for the most part most of the time people only see you from the waist up mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you really want most of your design to be the waist up like mm -hmm. you obviously you, you don't want to leave the bottom half lacking but they're <laughs> gonna see mostly the waist up oh, gotta get but, those peats um, gotta get those grippers yeah right so sad nobody gets to see my peats <laughs> <laughs> but that was one thing to consider and it was like readability was also a thing like it was can people understand who you are and what you're supposed to be just by looks alone? Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. do think I do accomplish that to an extent. So yeah, there, no. there are parts that I love about this, but then there are parts that are like, I see other people's designs. They're so beautiful. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know. Because I try to make outfits like that and they just look right on me. Yeah, it just doesn't fit the the complete vibe. But I, mean, I do like my racer outfit that I made recently. My, I love the, it's the super racer cute. Good. It's 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 also very sexy. I mean, <laughs> it's also just you, so I think any outfit would work. But ah, yeah, no, I think I also think that like, and then maybe this is just me when I was making my original design, and even for this one, uh, my updated one, it is one of those things that I think um, I don't know. It's, it's, I like to, I, I ended up thinking in terms of like, well, what would be identifiable? What would be iconic, but also like easy to animate, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Something that is that's, definitely a big thing too. What's easy to animate? Because I don't, like, do I have the funds to, to hire animators? No, absolutely not. Am I an animator? Absolutely not. But I still like to think about <laughs> it. <laughs> um... As soon as I figured out how to get the Miku Miku dance program to work, all it's it's over for everyone. It's game over. It's game over. As soon as I can animate <laughs> myself doing the, the Fortnite default dance, it, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that was one thing I did always think about mm -hmm. um, for like, oh, if one day I ever get a model, oh, it'll be such a pain to rig all those tails behind me. Oh, yeah, you do have a lot. I had thought about um, adding wings at one point, and then I looked up how to do that in Viewer, and I was like, maybe I won't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I'm going to have to, like, multiply my... Because, you know, usually rigging, there's a price for the tail to, like, move the tail. I'm going to have to multiply that by, like, nine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, like, for those... For the tails alone. So that was once uh, something that I did think about too. But I did want to keep all my tails. It's just gonna be something I have to just suck it up. 
deal with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it. That's that's a that's a tough one. Um, thankfully, I mean, I have a I have a cloak now, but that's that's about that's about it. I, I love don't... your new fit. I Thank love you. your new outfit. Ellie did and a... your hair. Your hair's so cute. Ellie did such a good job with this. It's it, I, yes, I love it so the much. The braid and everything. I love it. I love the the, the whole Thank aesthetic. You. Um, oh, by the way, uh, so, since it looks like you're, uh, getting, getting a little done with that peach cobbler, um, I was gonna go ahead and pull something else off of our waiter. What do you mean? Um, I'm totally eating the glass by now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just, they didn't need this, I don't think. Oh, okay, is that the staff? <laughs> that's, 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 it's, you know, oh, you just some souls, out. just some souls, here you go. Yeah, here we'll just, we'll just we'll let you snack on this for a second while I just. There we go, very good. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Was that. Delicious. I'm feeling rather full now. I'm feeling so stuffed. <laughs> I can imagine. How about we go on a little walk then? I do huh? love this restaurant. I do love this restaurant, oh, yeah. but I think it might be nice to to check out some other places real quick. Um, yeah, we could go for a stroll. We can go for a walk. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. You know what? We can go back to uh, my usual, one of my usual places when I'm streaming that has a lot of meaning to me. Let me let's get out from this. Uh, get out from this table, and let's go on a little walk to uh, one of my favorites, which is the. Let's see. Well, I do love a walk under the stars. I think it's very romantic. Ooh, that's true. We can point out the stars. Yeah. Do you I think Mimi's like up there searching, exploring? I think the the two purple sort of orb like structures are probably just Mimi's tits. Actually, she's watching us right now. <laughs> um, I forget when Mimi was like, uh, "I'm huge." I was like, "But like for scale, how big?" She's like, "Oh, I'm big, big," and I'm like, oh, "Hell yeah!" Big, big. <laughs> I like to think I, I I had never thought about this, but now I'm like. I, I I want to assert from now on that the, the these two purple galaxies behind me are Mimi's tits solely because I think that would annoy her. <laughs> that would. She would get so upset by that. <laughs> it's the exact kind of bullshit that, that gets on her nerves. It's very funny. Um, well, very funny to me, which is what's important. <laughs> when she said, like, oh, yeah, I have a... Uh... Just planets on my belt. I was like, dang. Okay, so she big, big. Mm -hmm. She's huge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, um, the, uh, yeah, no, I like it here. I also, you know, I thought I might take you to one of my other favorite places. The Windows background. Um, oh, word. You know, this is a place from my childhood. This is probably, I spent probably more time here than I did really in Maryland, like really present in Maryland. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, yeah, I would. We can. Um, I can eat the grass. You know, like you know how animals like to go outside and eat grass. I can eat the grass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we play Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> play some, play some arcade. I just think it's kind of yeah, nice. Yeah, the the pinball game. Yeah. What do you think of the I, weather? Uh, one of my first experience doing art, mine is drawing, just mm -hmm. on like paper, was in the little the little windows ms paint is that what it's called ms paint right yeah yeah that was i don't i wish i could remember what my first deviant art username was but it has like some of my original very badly done like uh ms paint drawings in there but i have no idea what my username would be there's no way for me to track that down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean yeah no there's a uh it's hard to it's hard to track down like the early stuff that you worked on as a kid, right? Yeah, no, I have no idea. Like, there's some of it I can track down because I can remember my usernames, but like, I don't know what it was with me. But for some reason, I just changed my username all the time on DeviantArt. So like, I had I had so many accounts, so I couldn't tell you which one was me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can am... remember the the last few, and then. That's about it. I can't really remember much of the early, early stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, like, my parents kept held on to most of my art stuff, but, like, I don't know that all of it was, like, I don't know. I don't know. so many viruses on the computer. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> I, my dad would be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I genuinely don't know, because I would just be on DeviantArt playing Flash games. I genuinely don't know how I was getting viruses. <laughs> 
Unless that was giving me viruses. <laughs> yeah. Did flash games give me viruses? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, any, it, it would be... Uh, maybe more difficult... Well, no. Actually, no. Flash was a huge vulnerability. Yeah, it absolutely can. Um, oh. What am I saying? Um, <laughs> okay. That's part of the reason it died. Uh, part of the reason that Flash was killed off was because it had a lot of security problems with it. Um, okay, well, I, never mind. I guess that's how I got them. <laughs> I would always be like, I have no idea. Yeah, that's actually one of those things that with with like Goose Goose Duck or Among Us that I really like is that it kind of gives it. It makes me nostalgic for old Flash games in a certain way. Um, the oh, task, you're right? It kind of does. Like, yeah, because I'm like sure for the pets and stuff. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure for the 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 youth for the youths, it's just sort of like, oh, these are fun little tasks or whatever. Like, I don't know that they have the same. They don't think about it as much. But for me, I'm just like, oh, this just makes me think of like the old days when like doing anything in a flash game on new grounds or whatever addicting games.com was like kind of novel um like it had that energy to it did so, you ever play like the barbie games no um and that's not for so i i was raised you know i was trying to be a boy and all that and i perhaps over um for some reason i felt the need to to overcompensate and be the as masculine as i could be which turned out to be not very um <laughs> but uh yeah so no i was i was very anxious to avoid things like that unfortunately um so no i missed out on those i well i was scared of dolls as a kid mm -hmm. because my sister thought it'd be funny to, to let me watch chucky when i was like I don't know, like four. Oh, so I was no. terrified of it. So I didn't actually like. I'm not a Barbie person, but I would play the Barbie games because they're mm -hmm. so fun. <laughs> um, but that's what it makes me think of when I think of flash games. I think of, like the Barbie games and stuff, and like Neopets. And it's crazy because uh, I asked some of my students the other day. I was like, "Do you guys know what Neopets are?" And they just looked at me and they were like, "Um, no, you're speaking in tongues." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so crazy. They they have no idea. I missed out on the I missed out on the Neopets. I um I don't know. Yeah, it's funny. It's we, funny how did you know did you ever know Webkids? Nope. Um <gasps> no, okay, no, no. So we are somewhat separated. <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny because it's like there is a little bit of an age gap between us. Well, cause like, um for me, the online spaces I was in um was like Gaia Online fucking live journal but um in terms of like places with like avatars and stuff like i was on guy online a lot um guy online being like if anyone discovered my guy online account and linked it to me i would scrub every i would not be on the internet anymore i would just be like all right that's it i have to banish <laughs> i have to disappear I knew people who played Gaia and like Maple Story, mm. but like I think I was still like a little too young for it. Like mm. I just didn't understand. Yeah, that that might be. I think you're right. That might be just the, the a, an occasion where our 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 age gap is is noticeable. Just it's just, just a, a slight bit. thing for the most part. It's fine, but for the slight like little things like that. Well, cause you're how how old are you? You're a few hundred years old, right? Uh, yeah, I'm like, I think I did the math. <laughs> I think it was like Mimi or Rosie stream. I did the math. Um, but it equates to about, uh, 24 human years. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, oh, uh, I, I don't know how old I am because I've been around for a long, long time since almost the beginning of everything. Yeah, see age is a construct time yeah when you get when you get cursed you know time just flies by and so you just don't <laughs> even recognize that it's gone by mm -hmm. time yeah. moves so slow yeah it moves slower too when you uh you go from being sort of active and out and about to like oh i stay in this room this is where i am time has no meaning Time has no meaning. It's a, yeah, it's so it's strange. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure uh, you and Mimi have mentioned also being uh, compared to me and Rosie. Uh, you guys have been around much longer than we have. That is true. That is very true. For all you know, we've been bickering for for millennia. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I just imagine you guys have just <laughs> been always arguing. <laughs> Just constantly, it's never, there's never once been peace. 
one one day I looked up into the stars and I noticed the stars looking back at me. We were we were both at the same time like, eh. That's what, and then you guys would say we were, we were ready to throw hands with the stars. Yeah, we were just we looked and then we're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, no, actually, no, and and well, Mimi was like that. I I I warmed up to her. <laughs> And I don't think she would admit, but I think she warmed up to me too. It's fine. But yeah, no, that's one of those things that like it is interesting. It is interesting to see how how you find little little differences that come with different ages. But I don't know. We're all here. We're all puppeting anime waifu JPEGs, so we're all sort of on the the same page. <laughs> oh. Say it's it's like that thing where it's like uh. We all, we all had trauma, and now we're all, like you said, puppeting JPEGs. <laughs> yeah. Somehow yeah. it's a pipeline. We all end, ended up here. It's so crazy, too, because it was like, um, I think, yeah, it, it's past March. March I was when I received my, my PNG, and it mm -hmm, was the first mm -hmm. time. I was so excited. Um, so it's kind of the anniversary of that, of me receiving my PNG. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the first time we streamed, though. That's people, so exciting. I'm really shocked when people remember their anniversary for stuff. I'm like, I have oh. no idea. Yeah, well, because <laughs> I remember the um the the very first day I did a stream. Um, The very first day I did a stream was August 25th. So that's... Do that's you have the... that memorized? I, I, Rosie's mentioned that I streamed sometime in March and then again in, like, June. And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Well, cause like that sounds right though. That sounds right. I think I I did try a test stream mm -hmm. for the first time in March. It was like a little bit after I had got my uh, my PNG because I was so excited, and it's it's so it's so interesting because I just one day was like, yeah, I think I I had been watching YouTubers here and there, but I wasn't super in the community. But I was like, I think this is something I would really like, mm -hmm. and it was. I wanted to do it because I wanted another way to kind of boost my art and kind of like put myself out there more. Mm -hmm. that and sounds. I feel like I lacked a community that I wanted, especially because Instagram is really hard to cater a community. It's not mm -hmm. really community based. People do it. Not saying you can't do it. There's tons of artists that I, I follow that have communities that they've built on Instagram. Oh, yeah. But I couldn't do it. I don't know. I was just struggling. And so I thought this would be another way to kind of advocate for that. So that's why, like, you can find my name so easily. So when people are like, uh, you just dox yourself. I'm like, well, I don't really hide who I am. It's, you can easily find who I am. Oh, sure, sure. It's, it's just another way for me to do something fun. And um, so it was just one day I was like, yeah. And then I remember I, like, looked. I think I, like, Googled, like, or not Googled, but I was on Instagram. And I looked up PNG tubers. And I was, like, looking up. That's what it was. I was on TikTok. And I saw someone talk about the little video tube, video tube, which is what I use to like make myself talk. Oh, and so I'm like, yeah. oh, here's how you can be a VTuber really easily. And I saw oh. it and I was like, oh, that's what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when I went on my quest. Uh, and I found my my current artist who uh their name is Audie PNG, and she does amazing art. I love her art. Um and yeah. that's how I basically ended up here. It's because of one little silly TikTok that ended up on my For You page. So it wasn't awesome. for that, I wouldn't be here. So cool, though. And and honestly, like, it's interesting to see how everyone got here because, like, I got here through, um... I was inspired by several VTubers, but primarily Numi, um, and her... I was inspired by her relationship with her community, which is um abrasive at times i was like wow they really bully the shit out of her i don't know that seems kind of fun um although it hasn't quite turned out that way for me most of my community is um i don't know if they're intimidated or if they just don't want to um they don't bully me that hard um but no the um i don't know and then i i found vroid and i was like this seems good enough and once i made the, once i made my first design for my for my original model it really did do um, a lot. And then, I don't know, there's a lot of... I think I just I always want to entertain people, and it seemed like a way that, like, kind of worked for me, because there's one thing I can say I'm good at, it is talking too much. And this is, you know, one of the few areas where that's really a, a benefit. <laughs> that's a good skill to have. Um, true, true. 
Sometimes I'm great at talking, and then sometimes I do be just sitting in silence because I'll be drawing and I'm like, I get into like a brain zone where I'm thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it's it's funny to say that though. It's me and Rosie always joke about it because like we've known each other for a long time, and when we were younger, like in like middle and high school, we'd always be like one day we're going to be entertainers together. We're going to be like something like that. And then we came across, like we knew about streaming, but it was Twitch streaming when I was in high school still wasn't huge. Like people did it, but it wasn't huge yet. Yeah. Um, And we were like, okay, we could do that. And so there is theoretically a, a Twitch channel that was like supposed to be for me and Rosie to have a collaborative. We were just going to share the account and do it together kind of thing. Oh. But we couldn't figure it out. <laughs> we didn't know how anything worked. We're like, how does one stream their game? How do you do this? How do you how do, you do anything? <laughs> so we never really got it launched because we never understood how to do anything. And then fast forward. Um, Uh-oh. Hi. <laughs> Uh oh, there we go. Had a slight little cutout disconnected just a bit. You were talking about how you and Rosie yeah. originally had your collaborative thing, and then some time passed. And if, if please, please continue. Yeah, some time passed, and and like I said, she was kind of already streaming, mm -hmm. and I just thought it was really cool and amazing. And I would watch her streams, and she just seemed like she was having so much fun. And I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. And I had tried doing live streams because you can do live streams on like Instagram and stuff, and they're okay. Once again, I just didn't have the community I wish I had. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But then fast forward, I see the TikTok, and that kind of like just like everything was set in place for it. And I already had a character that I was using for a mascot, which ended up being Kisumi. So I mean, it really just worked out. That's nice, though. That's I mean, that's cool. I. It's interesting to see how, because um, I didn't get into, I got into VTubing by myself. I kind of hit the ground running and was started my first stream at the end of August. And then September, I was just uh, kind of just full blast social, like trying to build a Twitter and, and uh, Twitch from scratch. Um, but before that, I my... I not know how to use Twitter. Before VTubing, I was like, how does one Twitter? I had a Twitter, but I never used it because I didn't, I didn't understand Twitter. Yeah, the worst thing that could ever happen to me, I think, is to have... <laughs> you know how sometimes for the big VTubers, they'll do like, hey, we went through the fucking like, early days of your Twitter and we found some funny shit. And I'm like, oh God, if that ever happened to me. Because, um, <laughs> you know, it took me a bit to, to find sort of my niche, to find my voice. I tried to be more of a of a of a sexy, sensual, flirty type, and I, it's not that that's gone. It's just that it's like that's taken, that's that's calm, that's mellowed out. I think um, to the point where uh, someone did a post on Twitter for one of those like try and fluster me things, and so I was yeah. just like, you know, all right, they're like, do your worst, and I was like, well, if you you know submit and beg like a good girl, then you can have my worst, which I think is pretty like. That, I don't know. That's 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 pretty basic dommy kind of stuff. Nothing that that uh, yeah. You know, and she was just like, "Wait, what the fuck? I wasn't expecting that from you." Because apparently, I, I she's like, "Oh, I just thought you were a very sweet person." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, no, I'm be sweet and a dommy. <laughs> I'm a kink better, and I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> it was just one of those things. I was just like, "Oh, I guess my brand will never purely be a um." It, it, you know, and I think this is just generally true, is that it's never going to be just one thing. So trying to force it to go a certain direction was, you know, I think it was valuable to try, but I don't think it was ever going to turn out quite how I thought. And that's perfectly fine. Um, I don't know. Actually, I think as a fun little thing, um, what if we both did an Ara Ara together? And, oh, okay. Oh, I'm a little measly, but I can give my best go. Yeah, I, I've heard yours before, and I thought it was lovely. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, that usually was when I when my nose is stuffed up, when I'm not full of allergies. Mm -hmm. But I, I will give it my absolute best. Go ahead. Oh, I'm going. Okay, okay, okay. Ada, ada. That's so cute. <laughs> That's so cute. 
Thank you, thank you. I like I always <laughs> I love when Rosie would try to do it and she would get so flustered. I'm like, you just gotta do it. You gotta do it if you think about it too long, then you can't do it anymore. Like I had to just shoot it out. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the um oh I guess I have to do my own. <clears throat> Trying to do a slightly higher one that time. Oh, wait, I didn't turn off my... Uh, well, let's hope that was fine. I didn't turn off my my noise suppression, and sometimes those get... Sometimes they eat my, my Um I don't know. I feel like I, I, I should try more like a, like Jolene from JoJo, when she, she's like more annoyed yeah, when absolutely. she does it. We can, we can workshop some Aradas. <laughs> Somehow, I feel, I feel like... I feel like that would be cute. I feel like some people out there, I don't know who might might appreciate that in this moment. Um, but yeah, the um, I don't know. There's a lot of different because there's also a lot of different ways to do it because there's the, the very sensual like, ah, la, la, but there's also like you can do it more fun. I don't that's think they me. do. That's how I feel when I have to say Adaragi. <laughs> Adaragi. Adaragi. Adaragi san. <laughs> yeah. And Hachikuchi's like, oops. Shitsure, <laughs> kamimashita. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Kamimamita. <laughs> oh. You know. Hope you don't mind. I was just feel like uh know, this cloak is getting a little too warm for me oh yeah i mean we are in the middle of the field yeah i'm gonna just i'm just gonna here i'm gonna just go Wait, let me see if i can't oh. find oh there we are whoops <laughs> my house <laughs> oh we can go back i just i i need to find my i need to find i was looking for a specific outfit real quick don't worry about any of that <laughs> okay fair enough Oops. Oh! Oh, I love it. Whoops. There you go. Facing you. That's better. I think that was, uh, this was the first outfit I saw you in. Really? The, um, uh, the <laughs> what is it called? The ghost hunting game? Oh, yeah, because of Phasmo. Phasmo, yeah, because of Phasmo. So this is the first time I saw you. Yeah, this is, um... Because this was, uh, I, I outsourced some of the outfit design elements for this one, but this is the first time I tried doing like a seasonal outfit. Um, I still like we a lot of the. Buns. Yeah, we do. I don't know. I felt inspired. <laughs> we also have matching matching fangs now. Oh, we do. We do. We do. We have matching fangs and buns. <laughs> yeah, I also was surprised at how much blacking out the scleras was like. Actually, kind of a good look. Um. Yeah, this is also interesting because this isn't this hasn't been touched by Ellie, so you can sort of see the difference in the rigging and you know, it's a different vibe. But I don't know. I do like this outfit. And it is fun to pose, because it's always fun to have like uh the different um Oh, how to put it. Doing doing posing work with the different models and doing stuff with the Halloween one was fun because there's a lot more of a Dom energy to it mm -hmm. that I like. It's fun to play with. It, I definitely see that. I definitely see that. You, you, you noticed a little bit? I did. I did. Just a little. I've changed completely. <laughs> <laughs> I personally love, I think it's the way sometimes um, I'm drawn that I have more like, like dummy, like mm -hmm. vicious, feral kind of energy. And then they get to my stream and I'm like, Hee -hee, I'm a silly fox. <laughs> well, it's also funny because you're, you're one of the people I know who's very proudly just like, oh, I'm an Omega. 100%. No no questions asked. Like, talking about Omega or uh, stuff. Just like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Maybe is not that as... The one that, no, that, is that the one Rosie is? No, Rosie's a beta. No, Rosie's an Omega. Rosie? Rosie's an Omega. <laughs> I'm not an Omega. You, no, 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 I'm very mm. much against being an Omega. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> That's right, we still Rosie's need to do our... Not being an Omega. We, uh, we, we still need to do our, um, Omega educational class. Um... Oh, yeah, I need to sit down for that one. I'm gonna have to ask Elliot to see. I want to talk to Elliot about getting some more outfits for my uh for, for the new the updated model anyway. Um, but yeah, the the um I want to get the 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 teacher one with the with the busted open um shirt. Ooh, that would be cute. Which That'd is be cute. 
normally the kind of thing that like I think a lot of creators would be like, oh yeah, I want to have something special prepared for that, or they'd be vague about it. And I'm just like, when I'm excited about something, I just want to tell people about it. I have zero <laughs> patience, as evidenced by the fact that I was like, oh, I kind of want to try out an ASMR stream. So last night I was like, fuck it, I'm doing an ASMR stream. How'd it go? Pretty well, actually. Um, people seem to like it. People seem to think I have a good voice for ASMR. And as I found out that like, you know, between like 3 and 5 a.m. on on Twitch, a lot of, lot of people just out there looking for looking for ASMR. Really? Yeah. Had a lot of a lot of people stop by. I was kind of surprised. Um, I read some fan oh. fiction. I read the one and only fan fiction that I've ever written. Um, I wrote I read my my one uh, fake Grand Order fan fiction, and I read some of my favorite uh, some of the my favorite fan fictions out of my bookmarks that are like tame and okay to to read. Also, I would not want to revisit the fan fiction I've written. Oh, I really? Want to? I know. <laughs> First of all, they're on Wattpad. Fair, fair. <laughs> so that is not something I want to revisit personally. I, not that I think the writing's bad. I think the concept's bad. That's no, fair. I don't even think the concept's bad. I think the concept is cute. I think the pairing, the shipping was bad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so excuse me. Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know sometimes you have questionable taste when you're younger and you you realize you're like. Eh. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know better now. I know better now. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Rosie would write so much fan fiction when we were younger together. <laughs> we would either we would write about all kinds, and we had like this notebook that we would pass between each other, and like one person would write a chapter, and then you'd pass it off, and the other person wrote the next chapter. <laughs> <laughs> like the things that we would do, we, me and Rosie were super <laughs> cringe together, but like in a cute way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so. I think that's I think that's fun though. I think being cringe together is important. Um, it's like I don't know. It's it. I, I sort of found this with um when I was doing the ASMR stuff. Is that like doing ASMR by yourself when you don't have like a planned out thing is actually kind of nerve wracking reading fan fiction being like oh yeah this is the thing i really like and then reading it and be like oh right i'm kind of embarrassed actually i feel weirdly vulnerable for reading like fan fiction i like that's not like objectionable like i feel like the worst that people would come out come out with it was like oh it's cute but like at the same time it's like i don't know still sharing something that i was like i i hold important to me right yeah no for sure i mean this is something that's special to you it's like whenever people show like any kind of special writing or literature or yeah. any, of any kind of sort i personally don't do that because especially with like teenagers because i teach teenagers and so whenever yeah, i share that's anything different. that i like they kind of fucking destroy it yeah <laughs> no so i would mean. never i would <laughs> never let i would never ever ever let teenagers find out that would like in terms of like if i was in charge because i have taught before um i have been not a teacher teacher, but um, I, when I was in Japan, I taught programming to high school students. Um, I don't know, just the energy of being in there and being just the teacher with the center of attention for all these teens. I'm just like, oh, I hate this. They're not even being mean to me, but if they were, I wouldn't be able to stand it. Like, Oh, sometimes they are fucking mean to me. I I'm, bully them back. It depends. Sometimes they are just mean and there's nothing I could do because they're just mean. Mm. Uh, other times I can kind of bully them back. But, uh, I mean, for the most part, I, unless it's in class, I know that it just, you have to read the room. It depends on the personalities. Mm. I've had classes where there are things I can share with them and things that I know they would genuinely enjoy. And I've had classes where it's like, um, no, we're going to do the boring stuff because y'all are too much. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's just like, you want to, you want to share the things that you're excited about, but then you're like, oh, unfortunately you can't always get away with that. And also sometimes people are just going to be unappreciative. So it's not worth it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They will break your heart about that. Um, I could honestly put on a clown outfit and juggle uh, balls of fire, and they would not look up from TikTok. <laughs> to be I believe it. Fair. I mean, to be fair, I had to take TikTok off of my phone because it was single-handedly making my sleep schedule worse. Um, which, as you know, my sleep schedule is not good. I didn't need the help. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't entirely blame them either because they obviously, like, their childhood kind of wraps around being dependent on their phone, especially because, like, they had the whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. So, like, they, because, like, I teach probably, like, 15 to 16 year olds, but sometimes younger, sometimes older. And so, like, they kind of literally, like, their middle school experience was very much like they couldn't be in school so they kind of miss that development of growth and like being social so you can kind of see how just a couple years truly did hurt them and make them very codependent on technology but not like like a computer but like a cell phone Uh and it's crazy to me to think because they can make a whole tiktok and it can be so professional looking but you ask them to make a file on a computer or like make a powerpoint and they have no idea yeah it's funny how um, it's how easy it is to over specialize. Um, also, I, you know what? I said it was a little warm, so it changed, but yeah. it's striking me that this dress is actually even warmer, so I'm actually going to switch back real quick. Um, oh, okay, okay. But I also wanted to. Well, there's a. There was, I don't know. I was a little nervous earlier um, in bringing this up, but I was just thinking that, like, I don't know. I thought it would be. You know, you're very pretty, and we're, we're out and about and checking out some oh. places, but. <laughs> What if we, I don't know, what if we got a little quirky with it and held hands and walked to your shrine? Would that be oh, okay? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of cats there. Hell yeah, <laughs> love that. <laughs> as long as you don't, and rats. I have cats and rats. Well, that's fine. I expected at least one rat. <laughs> yeah, let's, we, we can totally go there. Yeah. I can show you around. Hell yeah. Off screen oh gosh, because of hands? because of terms of On service. The first date? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun to get a little wild with it. Yeah, I love that. I love that whenever I'm watching a shonen, no, a sho- shoujo, mm-hmm. and uh, that's like one of the biggest hype moments. Is they hold hands, and yeah. it's so <laughs> it's so cute, <laughs> so wholesome. You're so cute. Oh, thank you. You're cute. <laughs> this is cute. I'm having fun. I'm having so much fun. I'm glad. I'm really glad. I was I was very nervous about how this would go, and I'm happy that it's actually. It, I'm having a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun, but I think really a lot of that's just because you're a very very fun person to talk to, and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you are too. Sometimes I get shy and I don't know what to say. But if I have a person who's like good at leading a conversation i can usually follow pretty well Mm -hmm. i mean would you say i'm pretty good at leading i i would say but welcome (laughs) to my shrine we're here we've made it here yeah whoops yes 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 it is a beautiful shrine i love it just it's just very Uh, lovely to look at yeah, that's that's all a rosy thing. So when I got here, it was barren. Everything was dying. Mm. Everything was dead. Nothing was. Uh, I just kind of just picked a spot because mm-hmm. I just needed a spot to live. Um, and so, and I didn't really care much about how it looked. But then Rosie came along one day, and she was kind of horrified. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Bitch, you live like this? <laughs> Bitch, you live like this?" Yeah, and 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 we all know Rosie. Rosie loves gardening. It's her thing. It's her niche. Mm-hmm. So she really took it upon herself to um to help the garden and the shrine look beautiful. So this is all things to her. Yeah, no, it's crazy because like, you know, I'm one of the gardeners, so like I'm used to that particular part, but I've never been here out here in the main shrine. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, usually it's I'm either in Norn space, Mimi's closet. Or Mimi's the garden. Closet. <laughs> Mimi's closet that, uh, legally speaking, doesn't exist. <laughs> but don't worry about it. <laughs> I guess you would be... Well, I guess some people have visited the shrine. Like, Rosie's been to the shrine and, like, a few others. But, like, I guess it's the first time I've gotten a chance to, like, Oh, yeah, this is the shrine. Welcome. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'd love to take you to my, to my Norn domain, but... It's not quite ready for guests at the moment. That's um, fair, that's fair. It's one of those things that I have to, like, if I bring someone who isn't dead, I have to clear it. If I have to bring someone who is dead, I have to clear it. <laughs> There's a lot of bureaucracy in red tape. You would think the whole shepherding of immortal souls would be a very, like, sort of, you know, easy and freewheeling kind of job, but there's a surprising amount of paperwork. More so than you'd think. 
It's actually unfortunate. Fair, fair. But yeah, no, someday I'd love to take you to Norn's base. It's, uh... I love how yours is like, yeah, there's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of matter of fact, you know, you gotta go through a whole process and system, and I'm like, I just be eating people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't know where their soul goes, I guess they go, it goes somewhere. <laughs> we can talk about fate weaving all we want, but I am just a glorified office worker at this point. <laughs> You know, I used to be a Valkyrie. I used to run around the world and fight and do other fun things, but uh, all that doesn't happen anymore. So now I'm just here. Now I'm you're here just, forever. Now there's paperwork. <laughs> now there's paperwork. <laughs> now, now you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But it, honestly, I think with with being able to meet you all was actually just really. It it made such a, a positive impact on my life that I can't really quite. It's hard to say where I would be otherwise in the sense that, like, you know, I'm sure I would have done all right with streaming and I would have done all right with VTubing, but having just, like, you know, having friends that I to get so close to so quickly and to just be able to, you know, find a sort of a sense of, like, home within the space, I guess, just really... Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's done nothing but good things for me. It's really... I don't know. I treasure. I treasure all of you so much. Um, it's VTubing and Twitch and streaming has definitely given me the community that I genuinely mm -hmm. wanted when mm -hmm. I was on Instagram trying to be an artist that I couldn't get, and it gave me that. And so I do. I completely understand. Like I, I've made friends, and I've made like either um like on twitter or discord and stuff like that like i've been able to connect with people and meet people even if it's for like a fleeting moment or if it's like long-term friendships like the ones i've made with like you mm -hmm. and mimi and astra and all those and can um or if it's just like uh just a quick conversation with people it's just it's really nice to have that that conversation before it was like i was kind of shouting into an abyss and like waiting for something to shout back at me but like usually it was disappointed like usually it was just like nothing but now it's like people like actually care i want to hear back it's yeah. really nice yeah no absolutely and it's it's also like i don't know i have um i think there's like i have i have a lot of friends that are they are my friends but they were friends that were originally like my partner's friends or like um, friends of friends and stuff like that. But, like, having VTubing has just been like, oh, I can make friends that are, like, my friends that are into the same things I am and have the same meme brain rot that I do. Um, just because, you know... Yeah, no, it, there is something amazing and really nice about that. I think we just... The community that we've built, I think, is really nice between mm -hmm. a lot of us because we share a lot of the same people. So it's really nice to, like, have that common denominator between all of us. Yeah, no, the... Uh, the, the crossover and audience between us is is kind of i think for mimi and i it's like 60 percent or something like we have a huge amount of channel crossover um and i think that's kind of lovely like i yeah it, it makes for sort of this larger community that we have and i think that's really nice um and also just like yeah i don't know we all we we can all get along because we all have similar interests and we all have like you know, we're, it's that selection bias of who's the kind of people that are going to get into into VTubing, and it just sort of, I don't know, it just sort of works. And yeah, if I, I don't think it would be, it would take a lot for me to stop VTubing at this point. But if I ever did, I don't know, I would still be like, I wouldn't want to like fade out of your lives because like I'm just like, I want to be, y'all are my friends. I just want to be friends. <laughs> Oh, no, I completely get that. I don't think I... I agree with you. I don't think I would ever stop VTubing. I think I just kind of keep what I'm doing now where I just... I pop in. I pop in and I'm like, hello. <laughs> I'm here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Um, well, if you're I here for a good time. I would get more consistent. That is one thing I would wish I would I could do is be more consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and have a schedule or at least have like a few times a week where I could do it. I think I would love... To for that to be more of a regular thing for me um but i never i don't think at this point i would ever stop plus it's so much i whenever i go to conventions it's always crazy to me how like 
I was telling, I was literally just talking about this too in my other sh- or my stream earlier today about how niche VTubing is, especially even in the anime community. Oh yeah. Um, because I pers- I guess because I'm so into it, like I'm just, I have VTuber brain rot, like I love it. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like it's it's amazing to me. It's not as big as I think it is. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, and especially people who are into VTubing, but like. I'll be like, oh yeah, do you watch like Buff Pop or something? And they're like, I don't know who that is. And I'm like, uh-huh. you know what Buff Pop is? Yeah. It is one of those things where it's like, or like people are like, I'm like, oh yeah, my favorite's new me. And people are like, I don't even know who that is. And I'm into VTubers. And you're like, oh, right. Um, right. Because there's so many. There's yeah. so many. And it's crazy to think that like how niche it is. And like, I mean, I don't expect them to know me. That's that's fine if they don't know who I am. Oh, which is yeah. always funny to me because when I when I run up my booth, I sell so many kissy stickers and it's so funny to me because I'm like, that's me, bitch. That's me for real for real. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying stickers of me. <laughs> but Yeah, um, that's really funny. That I mean that is one of those things that like because you know, you talk about your your niche internet micro celebrities, but that's the niche internet micro celebrities are the big VTubers. Right. That's like and it like Gura Guar Gora is a fucking like niche internet micro celebrity. Fucking and you know, we we still manage to have communities in spite of that. And I think that's what's really cool about it. Well, like me and Conker were talking about like um I think numbers wise, Guda has like the 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 most subscribers. I think she's got like six million. Something and like that crazy, so yeah. It's crazy to think that Theoretically, she is the biggest one, but six million is really not a lot in no. the grand scheme of everything else. And it's crazy to think that. Also, I think it's funny too how she's the biggest one, but I don't know. If it's just, I don't know if it's just me or something, but when I think of like VTuber, like the VTuber, Iron Mouse comes to mind for me. Like, mm. but it's crazy to think that she's not. Like, Guda has, has better numbers than her, but it's crazy to think that. Yeah. I mean, it's also like, I think. And this is, this is, I don't have the data to back this up, but I also think that due to the influence of being a Hololive VTuber, I'm going to guess that um, Gura also just has more, like, international, um, yeah, in terms of, like, yeah, Japanese Hololive, followers. Helps. Yeah, and she speaks Japanese, too. I think yep. that also really, because it's way bigger there than it is here. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing some, like, I don't know, early morning, um, Duolingo, like, Japanese Duolingo streams, because, like, I can speak conversational Japanese, but... You know, Duolingo is as good an activity as any. See if I can't try and get some of that international audience myself. Because I think that'd be an interesting way to start doing, like, YouTube streams or something. Just for fun. Um, that would be cool. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot of... There's a lot going on um, with just, like... Uh, like, just... You think about numbers. I think too much about numbers sometimes. But, like... The fact that, like... I don't know... I, I, I don't, like, obviously my numbers aren't huge, but at the same time, when I think that, like, oh, where, where, where are we at? Ten people are watching this right now. That's incredible. Ten that's people awesome. people really just be chilling. Ten I people couldn't, really just be chilling with us. Yeah, I couldn't get ten people to hang out with me for fucking nothing in real life. Like, that's a that's a lot of people. Um, right. I, no, I completely agree with that. Like, whenever I have, like... Just a, 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 people watching, I'm like, damn, y'all bitches really chose to watch me out of all these people? Like, goddamn, I can get ten people to watch me hit on fo- like hot fox ladies? That's incredible. <laughs> that's that's wild. I just think it's one of those things that, like, I, it, it helps me to ground the numbers in that real sense of, like, imagine ten people in the room. Imagine ten people just, like, coordinating that yeah, in a space true. that is not digital. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just yes also all staring wide-eyed no blinking <laughs> but like i don't know i think it's neat um numbers are sometimes like also misleading because there's plenty of people that i see who have like super big engagement on twitter and like large followings and stuff like that but when they go to stream like the numbers don't mm-hmm, match mm-hmm. up at all with how much it should be with how much it, like they should have be, be having with the the engagement and the followers they do have so it's always weird with that too yeah that's so, why I, mean, I don't really go for the the follow for follow or like i don't do as much as many of the networking post stuff because in my experience it's never a lot of the people that follow me based on that don't show up um like 
I don't know. I like like there's a lot of people that I think like I think that in my case. I could try and grind for getting the follower count number up more, but I'm just like, I don't know. People show up and it'll show up. And like the best advertising is word of mouth anyway. So if I'm, you know, engaging to the right people and if, you know, those people are willing to be like, hey, if you like VTubers, check out Lauren Haley. That's more that's more effective to me. And also just like, I don't know. I like the idea of it being more of an organic process than having to worry too much about like, Oh, I'm gonna do, you know, constant, constant, um, you know, I need to make friend posts on, on Twitter, or I need more, more followers posts on Twitter, um, and stuff like that. Cause I like, when I was, when I was first on and trying to grow, that was definitely the route that I thought you were oh, supposed yeah. to go. So it was the route I took, and that's why I think I did. There was a few posts that I had too that just kind of blew up, but besides that, like, but I completely agree. The numbers that I have do not equate at all to the numbers that I should have. I guess is a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I in retrospect, kind of wish I wouldn't have grown that way. That I mean, way, I don't think have there's a more anything wrong with it. Mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I mean, I think sometimes numbers, sometimes as much as we'd like to think it's not the case, sometimes people will look at your numbers and be like, oh, yeah, you, you, you know. People react to that. Like, I, there's a few yeah. people that I would like to collab with, but I'm just like, I, I look at my numbers and I look at your numbers and I, I kind of feel anxious about it because I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm like out chasing or something. Yeah. But I don't know. You know, you have so many more followers than me on Twitter and I was just really nervous and I didn't want you to think that <laughs> I was just like, I didn't want you to think that your wife was clout chasing is all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't at all. Don't worry. I, I give any, I kind of, that's a bad thing, but I do give people the benefit of doubt that they just want to be my friend. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you want to be friends? Let's be friends. But I have had that kind of a few times where I realized that they had underlying motives for why they wanted that, why they were talking for me. Specifically, less for the cloud chasing, more for free art. Mm. I was like, uh, I see. I see where we're trying to go with this. And then I kind of have to, like, just stop talking to them. Yeah, I... A few times you've done art of me, I I appreciate it very much, but I'm like, I, I, I never want to be like, art of me? Art of me? Art of me? Because I'm just like, I don't want to be that person. I want to... I, I wanna... had a person specifically be like, yeah, you should, like, draw us and then, like, an outfit swap. And I was like, that's oddly specific. They're like, yeah, I have another art friend that's doing it too. And I'm like, that's crazy how you can request that, but you gotta pay me if you want to yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll get a job. I'll commission people. I'm gonna commission you so hard. Just you wait. When I open commissions? <laughs> nah, I'm gonna, I'm if gonna... I open commissions ever again? I'm not gonna like go for the friend discount. I'm gonna go for the friend commission queue. I'm gonna just be like, don't care about I'm paying you full amount, but I'm just gonna try and see if I can angle for the chance. <laughs> <laughs> I let me give I you money. One day open commissions again. Mm. Just currently, I don't know what it is. I just cannot bring myself to do it. It's just it can be the hard to find. Of working on commissions, I think, is sometimes constraining, and mm. I feel like I can't. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I just don't know what to do, or I feel like I, I'm never satisfied with the product versus something that I want to draw, which is, I know, a big difference. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. that kind of affects, and then it affects the way I draw, too, because I can feel myself not liking it, and I can feel myself, and then it, it's probably, oh, no, the drawing's fine, like, the, there's nothing wrong with the drawing, but mm -hmm. in my head, I'm like, no, it's hideous, it's ugly, I hate it, I don't want to look at it. Yeah, I get, yeah, that's, it's tough when you you feel like you have to do something, even though it's normally something you can just sort of vibe out and feel it out for. Um, yeah, also, I, yeah, and then I can take my time. Mm -hmm. Like this, the, the racer piece I'm doing, I think I started it like months ago, but I'm just now getting to the point where I want to finish it because I didn't want to finish it. I just didn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I lost the interest and motivation, but then I came back to it. And I was like, actually, I'm gonna try to finish it. Now I'm, I'm actually really, really liking it. But like, I don't. There's, there's a, I don't know. I know there's a thing now where like people want art pieces faster, 
Which, to an extent, I kind of understand because they got, you know, shit to do, I guess, debuts to be at or whatever. I don't know. Um, so I understand there's kind of a demand for faster art, but sometimes, you know, the art's gonna come when it comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I can't... I'm not an artist, but I can understand that a little bit with um, some, of the, some of the projects that I've set out to do and then found that I was just like, no, actually. Because, um, like, I've thought about getting back into doing, trying to do voice acting stuff, but the idea of trying to do voice recording on a tight schedule with, like, stuff I'm not inspired to do makes me anxious. Yeah. Makes me worried. I think that's a thing, too. I think it's a time thing for me. Like, if I had... if Genuinely, if I just had more time, if I didn't have to, like, work full time and do all that, I think I could then handle commissions. Yeah. It's also one of those things that, like, it always makes me anxious about doing, like, I do something once and people are like, oh, that's great, but it's normally something you do, like, as an ongoing thing, then it becomes stressful. Doing it once for fun is one thing, but continuing to have to do it is like, oh, no. Which is part of why I'm so fucking bad at doing my own karaoke streams. Um, I always <laughs> want them to be, I'm always anxious about those. I'm always like, oh, They're but it so has to be fun, perfect. so though. I love whenever I get to be in one. I would watch. Oh, thank you. Like, I would love to do one one day. Hell yeah. I have so many ideas, though, but I'm always like, ah, that's for a model me thing. I should <laughs> just... I, mean, just... I need to stop <laughs> thinking like that, but it is. I'm like, that's for a model me thing. Yeah, that that is funny, <laughs> though, because it's like... Every once in a while, there's the, you know... You know how Twitter discourse will come cyclically and, like... Or cyclically, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, hey, it's time to talk about VTubers starting out spending a bunch of money on their 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 assets and things um and like i'm just like i spent almost no money i bought some very cheap booth assets um i paid for my overlay which was really cheap and i made a free model and yeah i just went and i think it is I, I feel like there's a pressure to be like, oh, you want at least like a really nice PNG or you want like, you know, a full rigged model to start. And I'm just like, just do it. Just, there is very much a stigma for that. Just, um, just go. Just do it. Fuck it. If, if... When I was considering it, I did originally make my own PNG, but it was before. It was before, honestly, I was technicality wise good at digital art i was still learning it um i probably could do it now especially because I've, I've had a few vtuber babies at this point <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an actual mom i'm an actual milf i have three kids <laughs> I mean, but it was a little bit before that so you know that I mean, just makes you makes you hotter to me <laughs> i was gonna say i mean just so you know on our first day i am a mom with three oh go on tell me <laughs> <laughs> um but it was before that, so I I was like, ah, I don't think I, I don't think I trust myself to make my own PNG. So it was it was one thing I did want to outsource, and but it, I was I was thoroughly picky. I was like, mm -hmm. I want someone who I know is gonna capture uh, exactly the kind of art style that I'm imagining, which I could not be happier with the one I currently have. Um, your your model looks so good. She did an amazing job. And it's she incredible. Did it she did it in like two days. I was I was shook. I was like, whoa. Damn. I like ordered it and then like I think it was like two or three days later she was done with it. Damn. That's like, really was, good though. It was super fast. And it was yeah, I love the whole the whole thing. But there's definitely I could have done it absolutely for almost free. I did buy I bought my overlay. I mean my shrine. I rented out. <laughs> we had a total discussion. I rent out my shrine. I don't own my shrine. Wait, I thought you were a squatter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read. I, yeah, I just kind of, you know. Um, but th there is, and I think people sometimes avoid the conversation that there, there is this low key thing with VTubers where they constantly are searching for the next big thing, whether it be a new asset or like a new model or something or a new outfit. And sometimes I do see the argument of being like, "Oh, you don't need that." But at the same time, we can't deny the fact that, like, though, those kind of events do 
so well and they happen all the time oh, like sure. i always see like the the bigger um vtubers constantly doing that so there is kind of that appeal to it all but like i mean i'm chill uh okay. with everything i've done so far but I mean, yeah, I there's... definitely do agree, though. You don't need a lot. I mean, there's plenty of YouTubers. I mean, Basil, Basil alone proves that you can hit partner with a PNG, which is pretty cool. That's yeah, that's excellent. And I think, you know, I think there is because like, I think there is a value in just doing it and just going because that's what I did. But like at the same time, I think it's one of those things that like, I don't know, you can kind of get away with like, because it, it, it's not just it's not just like oh you need to do this for engagement it's like i like a shiny new toy i want to have you know because i like when people say nice things about my model and people having seen the same model for enough times won't say as many nice things about my model so i want to get a new outfit because i enjoy it and i think the people that in my I think my community will enjoy it um and then people will say i'm pretty and it's yay but <laughs> I it scratches the attention horror out. part of my brain <laughs> <laughs> fair enough i went the png route because of like for one i didn't know if i would even like streaming and vtubing so this was my way of like kind of dipping my toes in the water to see if i like it without um splurging so much mm -hmm. and then once i found out i liked it i was like okay fuck it oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna go all in balls deep now um but it was kind of like my way of slowly inching into it and kind of figuring out if i liked it so um Sorry, you said. I think it's good in that sense. You said you're talking about slowly inching and balls deep. My brain kind of got sidetracked. Um, you know, hobby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the um, yeah, I think I think it is one of those things that like it's good to have a, a cheap way. I mean, eventually, and it's like I like my I like this model. I really love this model a lot. I, and... The model's really pretty. I really love that. Thank you. Um, like, and I'm happy to get just you know I'm happy to do this for a while like eventually i think it would be fun because like i always want to have like i want new models just because i am a mer mercurial person that wants like a different look to switch to for different reasons and i want to have like my lore sort of outlines a bunch of different looks i could have that i think it would be fun um but like those are just for fun those are for for me those are like not necessities those are like that would be a fun thing to do but what i have now is like fine for me um because like i'm more focused on stuff d new ways to interact with my community or more focused because like i want to get the fancy asmr mic i want to get um a heart rate monitor i want to get like um a, one of those iphones with the depth sensors so i can do the really really good fancy um excuse me facial tracking but i can also do like an eye tracker. I'm terrified of an eye tracker. I don't want people to see where my <laughs> eyes go. And that's if 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 we had an eye tracker going right now, people oh. wouldn't be able to see your tits very much for the fact that they're just, it's just it's like hmm, oh tits. They are lovely, Boots. by the way. Thank you, thank Uva, you. It's they're splendid. They're you know they're all natural. Beautiful, a shrine unto itself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. I mean, everything you say though is is. I think involves more engagement of your community, which was what you were saying. And I think honestly, as much as a a beautiful model that's rigged and amazing looking, it can only carry you so far. If you're a boring person, mm -hmm. it can only carry a boring person so far. And like some people genuinely, and they find out later on, I see so many graduations being like, yeah, this isn't really what I expected it to be. Um, and there's people who find out that it's not for them and they don't have the personality type for it and they realize that it's not for them and that's why like yes a nice model can do a lot for you it can bring people in but it might not be able to keep people it just truly depends on that personality and i think engagement and what like the things you're talking about helps so much with is just keeping those people in yeah and wanting wanting them to come back for more yeah i also think that like a lot of people don't necessarily think about um how to put it like when i think of collabs when i think of like doing stuff like that um because i don't tend to approach people for collabs if i don't think we would if like if, if i think like we wouldn't have any chemistry at all 
I'd just be like, oh, I don't think this is going to... that That's probably not going to be a good fit. Because, like, you know, you want someone that you have good chemistry with. You want someone who you feel like has improv instincts in a similar line to your own. Um, like, you know, when I... Actually, was it... Did I approach you about this collab? Or did you just... Did we both sort of get to the point? It's like, oh, yeah, we haven't had one of those. Um, I think... I think I had mentioned collabing i think in my server but i don't think i mentioned it with anything specifically mm. um but you ended up reaching out to me and being like hey would you like to do one and then we kind of brainstormed it from there yeah, yeah. um which yeah once we let, i think I, I think the reason i brought up the date idea was because of um Numi had just done one of one of her dates and i was just like that looks super fun that looks like a super fun way to do things um, and, uh, I just think it's one of those things that, like, yeah, I don't know, it worked out, and I kind of figured that it would work out for us just because, I don't know, we're already married. If we couldn't get a single date to work, that would be, perhaps, a, <laughs> be a, awkward. a, a bad portent for our marriage. marriage. <laughs> you know, it's like, you ever get married and you realize that, like, wow, I can't date this person. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. I think you're besides Rosie, you're the first person I've no, 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 Mimi. I, I club with Mimi. I was gonna say, besides Rosie, I have collabed once with Mimi. Most of the time, though, I don't collab. Uh, mainly because I feel like I have such a weird schedule that mm -hmm. most of the time I feel like it's too much of a bother for people to work with. So I don't, that's why usually I don't reach out. Um, so normally I'm on my own or, or I'm with Rosie because I know she usually is always pretty adaptable to what. I can do um so she usually doesn't mind changing things around or moving mm -hmm. things but you were once you were really wonderful and flexible about most things and it was <laughs> great so I mean it worked out really well for me yeah no I mean one of the benefits of being unemployed is uh I can I I can match anyone's schedule right now <laughs> um but also just like I know you're busy like I and I don't think there's ever a rush on it like as long as we, as long as we were going to get it, you know, as long as we we're going to get there at some point, I think that's fine. Um, cause you know, I don't want to have like a, a rush, like, oh, this is the only time we could make. And there's just, it's just like, it puts too much stress on it. Like, and like, if I wasn't, you know, if there was something that wasn't feeling quite right with it tonight, I was, I'm, I was fully willing to be like, well, we'll just find another day for it. Cause like, I think it's better to have especially for collabs especially for collabs like it's so important to just be able to like you know both come into it at your most like relaxed and your most like yeah we're, we're in a good we're in a good energy for it and i think that part of that's just being flexible and part of that's just being like you know you'll get there when you get there and like i've done a few collabs at this point but i've also have some blind spots out of the people that like i spend i'm a lot of time otherwise with or like we've you know we had we had a we had that phasmo collab together and we've been on other people's streams together and i was just like i don't know nice to have some us time because i know we had plenty in common in terms of mona guitari and other and modica and, and other other shows that we like so i thought it'd be nice yeah, no, for sure. I definitely think personality-wise, we also we also work really well together. Like mm -hmm. you said, there is a vibe with people, and you do kind of have to test the water with the vibes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm usually pretty adaptable, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. Like you can kind of tell when it won't work. Oh yeah, no, and when you when you stuff that entire peach cobbler in your mouth and just got it everywhere, fully, I, that yeah, really passed the vibe check for me. All over my face. <laughs> no, I was oh, it's so sexy. <laughs> I had <laughs> elbows on the table, full body fully on top of the uh, the table, mm -hmm. as I was just uh, face deep into that cobbler. But not like not like on your back, but like like hunched over, like yeah, yeah hunched over like a like an animal. <laughs> yeah, that's that you know, and that's what I, that's that's the kind of energy I look for. <laughs> that's the kind of energy I look for in a wife. <laughs> I'm so glad we can accomplish it. Uh, I feel like me and Asher really embody those. It's true. It's true. Um, <laughs> Who would have thought the two animal ones would really embody right? being feral? <laughs> but yeah, I do like the... Um, 
And and also we we're both into feet, so we have that as well. No, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what? I when you we you posted your uh, um, uh, kiss shot figure in the other the other day in the Discord, she and I great feet. Oh yeah, I was I had to hold She's myself back from being like, wow, those grippers. Someone put a lot of love and attention to those, huh? They really did though. I'm not even gonna lie, her feet are really good. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just love that you you were like offended I that I brought it up I and then notice her feet. <laughs> but you did notice her feet. Uh, my black I have a black Hanikawa figure. Her feet are also cute there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She got cute feet. Why can't I? I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm just looking respectfully. No, I just, I just really love my wife. Kisumi, I don't have a foot fetish VT. Um, <laughs> I'm ooh. just looking. I'm just perceiving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. She does though. You're right. Whoever made that, they sculpted that with love. Yeah. They're like, well, gosh, she sure does wear stockings in her, in her outfit. We can't pass up that opportunity. There, yeah, I agree. There's there is something nice. Oh, this was a question I wanted to ask you. Oh, this has nothing to do with what we're currently talking about. What are some of your uh what are some of your go to um hentai tags? Ah, okay. I was, I was like, we talking tags? We talking tags? We are talking tags. Oh yeah. Um tags that I like. Let's see. I do enjoy I will go for the foot tag. I'll do it. Uh -huh. I, I I'll admit that. Um, <laughs> sometimes I like a good transformation tag. Oh, I, okay, fair. I like, um, sometimes I used to be, before, before my transition, I had a real thing for the gender bender tag. Couldn't tell you why. Um, oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair and, and enough. like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> um, but like, what else? I don't know. There's, um... I like, I do have a, a real thing for um, strangers or relative strangers, uh, like getting intimate at a really fast pace. So there's a lot of like the, the gay for pay or prostitution tags, depending on what you know side oh, I'm on. Okay, okay. Um, or public use is a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, public use is fun because it's also very flexible. Public use is a, is a kink that's sort of defined by the other kinks that you're bringing with it. Because um, uh -huh. you have the. I guess there's the there's the more hard hard line like slave variant of that, which is not usually the kind I go for. I like the world where people are just like that, and everyone's just sort of enjoys everyone and in, everyone involved is having a good time and vibing with it. Like that's a, that's that's the kind of energy I like is the the one where like yeah, that's you know, what I was imagining. We have we have we have you know you have your your friends your your significant other, but you also have the public like fuck homie, and that's that's great. I think that's yeah. neat. What about you? What kind of what kind of things do you go for? Um, I I I'll I'll look at the tags, but you, what I usually do is I look at the art first. So I'll look at the art, mm, and then fair. I'll look at the tags because I can't read one if it has bad art. I just can't. There's something I can't get through it if it's bad art. Yeah, I know, can read bad writing, but I can't read bad mm -hmm, art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fair. I actually, yeah, that that is something that I do definitely. The art needs to be right. Um, so usually, like, I'll, I'll look, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the art, and then I'll look at the tags and kind of go from there. And be like, ah, okay, okay, this one has breeding, that's fine. This one has a mind break, okay, I can deal with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, mm -hmm, some of it, mm -hmm. some of it. But then I'll, I'll see like a few that I'm like, oh no. What is your, what is your, you're looking through the tags and you're like, no, I don't think I'm actually gonna read this. Um. Things that, okay, so like tags that really just, I don't go for, um, well, first of all, I, don't, I think this is something that we have in common. If there's any kind of diaper involved, I'm out. Um, yeah, no way. Um, no, absolutely not. Body, bodily fluids outside of, outside of the usual ones are generally not my, uh, not my thing. Um, so I, no that's, that's, that's on a, that's on a case by case basis sometimes i'm okay, like fair. sometimes i'm like you know what maybe maybe a water sports manga is what i'm up for um but that's not like a that's not like a that's not all reliable for me that's not that's that's a sometimes thing um okay okay D depends on the situation <laughs> depends um but yes um the 
there's that there's what else what else puts me off um i don't usually go for like blood i usually don't go for any kind of gore i usually don't go for like um i don't know i don't like it when characters are genuinely having a bad time um Th that's completely fair like yeah i can get behind yeah i'm not really into the if they're feeling awful kind of stuff yeah uh, like beyond the specific tags that's the general thing is i want everyone to be having a great time and Gen and not necessarily through coercion either. I just like everyone to have a fun time with it, even if like even if the situation can have like dubcon elements to me, I still want everyone to be like enjoying themselves. And not that I'm, you know, casting aspersions on the on people who are into the other stuff, it's just not for me. Um be good NTR. Like you could have an NTR that's good. Oh sure. I mean the thing is with the NTR though, I'm just like <laughs> maybe it's because I'm poly, but I'm just like but wouldn't it be better if all of them slept together? <laughs> I'm a big fan of group stuff. That that is something that that I do enjoy. Um, okay, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, that's just one of those things that like I don't know. I do agree with you that like oftentimes more than anything, it's all about like the art and the writing and the vibe of it. Like there's stuff where like it has none of the tags that I usually go for, but if it's well executed, I'm just like yeah, sure, I'm down. Um, I love a good manhwa. A yeah. manhwa that's colored. I'm like, ooh, okay, oh, yeah. I'm interested. Also, when it comes to, like, sapphic smut, I'm super picky about that. So, like, I wouldn't go for the typical hentai sites for that, just because the, the style of it is very much, like, straight dudes making Yuri content, which is not always my jam. Yeah. Um, But there's a lot of... There's a lot of really good <laughs> Korean sapphic smut made by queer authors that just works and it's just good um the it, korean stuff's where it's at that's where i honestly i don't even bother with the japanese doujins i go get my one one and i'm like this is where the good stuff is <laughs> it's good shit um although there there are a few ones like um asumi is interested in lesbian brothels really excellent really excellent smut Super good. I uh, love that story so fucking much. Marks? Absolutely, I will send it to you. It is one of my favorites because it has it has actually a lot of my a lot of things um in it that I like. Um but yeah, it's 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 real good. I'm trying to think of there was another oh, I do like that's Omegaverse really stuff, but like there's that's usually I end up consuming something I can I read on like AO3 more than I actually see it in um comic form. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, 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 that makes sense, that makes sense. But I cut you off a little bit. What were you, gonna, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say with GLs, that's the thing with them, is like, um, GLs have like the exact opposite problem with, of BLs, where it's like, you get only cute stuff, but you never get like, I would like some smut. I would like some smut in my, in my story. Mm -hmm. If you want but, like, some... You know, BLs have the opposite issue, where they're like, kind of too much, to mm -hmm. the point where like, they got... We all got an issue with you know, like the rapey vibes, mm -hmm. um, which is just like common in the early stuff. And then, but now they're they're kind of the more modern BL has definitely gotten better with the more cute like fluff and stuff like that. But they've had the reverse problem. But I feel like GLs had just too much fluff, and I'm like, okay, but like, can we get a little spice in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Um, I mean, if you want, I have some. I have, I have, I have some recommendations. I, you know, what? I'm gonna send you a few links. We'll say, um, there's absolutely. a absolutely. I would love a few links. There's like a Korean one called uh, "Drunken Love" that it's spicy and they draw it real good. Um, like, I there's 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 yeah. I, I get what you're saying though because there is a lot of um. I don't read as much BL, but like. Yeah, it, BL's definitely like, okay, count down to them fucking, um, or we started there, versus right. like, um, GL will be like, all right, we've had this entire series, they have kissed once, and we're gonna call it, and you're just like, but, <laughs> but, 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 I feel like Asha, on. Asha's also read so many GLs, I feel like she's got a lot of opinions on this too, if she's oh, here. Oh, yeah, no, she's here, uh. Astra is also sharing her opinions. <laughs> As Astra, well, Astra's last thing was um, begging you to open your commissions so you could draw her as an office lady. 
I love that idea. <laughs> Good <laughs> open commissions just for Asher for that. Hell yeah. Um, what if we were all OLs? OLs? The office ladies. <gasps> oh my god, yes. I'm just saying. But like we could all be office ladies. Oh, I love the tights look. The tights. Oh yeah. The tights look is like that's. T I do love a good office worker. <laughs> I definitely agree. Keys and me. I don't have a foot fetish. VT. I think that's uh, stockings are wonderful. Tights are great. <laughs> I, I don't get me wrong. Fishnets classic, but there's something about tights that just do something different. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, this this is fully entering like my actual preferences territory. So yeah, I agree hundred percent. I'm I'm like yep yep yep. Um yeah no it's uh it's it's one of those things where it's like there's fishnets are fine and all, and I think there's looks that are because like I think fishnets for me just don't accentuate like they're they're sexy on their own, but they don't like enhance like the foot experience as much to get really into the the specifics of it like not as much as like something that's like more of a of a sheer stocking or or like something like that or tights which uh -huh. i use yeah. a, all those terms too interchangeably i've been criticized of before but i don't know um but yeah i don't know it's one of those things that like it's kind of nice like that was one of those things that, like, the fact that I enjoy those so much might have actually caused me a small hiccup in understanding that I was trans because I, it kind of led me to think that I was just literally a fetish for me. Like, it was like a cross-dressing fetish. It's like, man, I sure do like wearing these. And then it's like, oh, wait, oh, no, wait, oh, wait, whoops. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. It's it's kind of I guess I was gonna say it's kind of interesting sometimes for me to look back and kind of point out the little queer moments of uh -huh. me growing up and be like that was a little funny of me that was a little <laughs> that's a little interesting but it's like I guess in the same aspect you kind of do similar things where it's like there there's a moment yeah 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 I mean I think that's one of those things that like there's certainly plenty of um actually speaking of fishnets and I, I think I've told this story before but I'm gonna So, like, my town had a, um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. They had a, a showing of that, and that is one of the few events where a, uh, big, giant, air quotes, cis man can cross-dress and no one will bat an eye. It's not weird. It's not going to get you any funny looks. That's just the kind of thing, that's the kind of event that it is. So, you know, I was like, oh, shit, I, that's a, well, you know, maybe I'll go, go to that and maybe wear something, you know, a little cute. So, you know, I went to Walmart and I shoplifted some fishnets, a skirt, and so, and <laughs> I think I had to pay for the heels. I couldn't I couldn't get those. Um, but I, I definitely got the other two because I was just like, oh, no, no, the heels were from Target. Excuse me. Um, but I didn't want to go to the to the Walmart cashier with the other items. But um, basically, yeah, so I wore all that and I planned it out so I would not run into any of my family on the way there. But my mom came home early. Um and my mom took one look at me and I, you know, I was like, yeah, go to the Rocky Horror Show. She's like, hmm, hmm. Your legs look pretty good like that, actually. And I'm just like, oh, oh, huh. And I just, I was just really happy about that. No, you know, hmm. Why was that such a nice thing? And then, you know, I was like, oh, I guess I have like a, a cross-dressing thing. But then I was like, well, a lot of the other cross-dressing stuff is like, there's like this whole emasculation thing that goes with it. There's this whole like sissification where it's like, it's, it's, it's humiliating and bad that you're wearing it. I'm like, I don't really like that part of it. Can't we just do the, I wear girl clothes and that's it? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, you're good. You're good. Did it fix itself? I guess so. I, I noticed that you were talking and I wasn't hearing anything. I was just like, uh oh. I can hear you now, I think. Oh, hold on. I think I fucked it up. I think I broke it. One sec. Okay, okay, okay. And once we left the restaurant, I really just dropped the ball on, on keeping up the data energy, huh? Well, don't worry, chat. You're still being very helpful. And I'm still working on that. 
We're, we're gonna get, we're gonna, I have at least one more of these I'm gonna do. Also for the suggestion to sing Lemonade by Jeremy Passion, I unfortunately do not remember enough of that to sing it. I am sorry. Did I break myself? Oh? Um, let's see. Well, I can hear you still, so that's a good sign. Wait, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Um, is it broken? I can't tell if it's broken or not. Hmm. No, it looks pretty broken to me. Well, yeah, it does seem like there's either... either our, I'm having periods of not being able to hear you, or there's just extra mouth flaps happening. <laughs> okay, hold on. Are you that nervous? You just you just opening and closing your mouth. You just wah, 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 wah. Yeah, let me do my ASMR mouth pops. The uh... you know, I think it's pretty sexy that we both have the magical ability to bring up what looks like computer program menus in thin air. I don't know. I just think that's kind of a... I think I fixed it. I think that's just kind of an attractive quality for both of us. I mean, it looks like it's working right to me. Nice job. Okay, perfect. I don't know what, I don't know what happened. Good work. I'm proud of you. I think the, the settings... Listed. I think the settings reverted back for some reason. But I think we're good now. I think we fixed it. Hell yeah. Okay, perfect. Um. Well. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, uh, how far into our into our date have we been? I mean, we've how long have, how long have we been going actually? Uh, oh, almost like three hours. Oh my goodness, it's actually a pretty good. Really? Date. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good date. Like, I don't. I feel like that's actually even. It didn't feel it doesn't feel like three hours. No, no, it's no, it hasn't. That's crazy. Oh, I think that's a good sign because you are you are just just very fun to hang out with. So, yes, you too. It's been really fun talking. It really just blew by. Yeah. I was wondering if maybe I could give you a little kiss in the cheek. <gasps> are we saying goodbye? You don't have to say goodbye. I just I don't know. Felt in the moment. Is that okay? Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Give you a little. There we Aww. go. <laughs> we'll ignore where the rest of me went. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I did. I mean, I don't know. There's not much of a sense of time when I'm with you, so I'm not too surprised. Aww. <laughs> it is it is getting a little bit late on my end. Yeah, yeah. We're we're starting and I I uh I think me tomorrow me and Rosie are going to go hiking. So Ooh, I'm pretty excited about that. Hell yeah. We're going to be in the woods. Well, I guess more in the woods. Mm -hmm. I guess we're always in the woods, but we're going to parts of the woods we don't know. Yeah. Actually, well, we're at your shrine already and maybe this is a little Maybe this is too forward, but I don't think I've ever seen your room either. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, we could go there if you want, but I mean, I would uh, prepare yourself if we're going to go in. Oh, Ooh, what kind of preparations? All right. Well, let's find out. Uh, <laughs> mentally. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, I... <laughs> This is it. We're here. Oh. <laughs> um. This is my. This is my room. This is where I stream. Um. Mm. As you can see, there is my computer behind you. That's where I do all my streams. Um. And. Oh, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that monitor. Don't look at that monitor. K Kisu. That's not the one. Kisu. <laughs> Uh, you should at least clean it up. <laughs> it's kind of like 
It's gotten to the point where it's crusted all in. It's, I have to like scrape it off if I want to get it off. I can't really wipe it off anymore. What's what's uh? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's uh. Hmm. That's a nice pillow you have. Thank you. Thank you. Where do they sell it's those? A, um, and there, it's that one was custom. You know, it's of my Oshi Rosie. Uh huh. Uh huh. I sleep with it every night. <laughs> hey, oh, oh! I guess we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess there's a little rat. I told you I have rats. I have rats That's and true. cats. Wispy's, Wispy's somewhere around here. Yeah, I'm gonna just. There's my tablet. My tablet's on the ground. I wish there was a sexier context for this. Truly, I do, but I oh. think we may need to deal with some things. Oh, <laughs> are you helping me clean? Helping, forcing, forcing, however you prefer to frame it. Um, uh, I kind of, I mean, it's, you know, you can find, I mean, it's fine. You, you can stay anywhere you want, just not on top of the body pillow. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is the make or break. This is where we don't see the second date. <laughs> the second date is the cleanup. The second date is, is, is dealing with this. Hilariously, <laughs> I have actually had the experience of doing um, volunteer work where I uh, worked with an organization that cleans out the apartments of hoarders. I have oh, really? actual experience doing this. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, Shomel. This is just my stuff. Uh -huh. This is just my uh, my my it, quirk. At least, the, at least the computer. Darling, please, <laughs> at least the computer. <laughs> That's just my blood, sweat, tears, and cummies, you know, <laughs> uh, what I put into all my art. You know, I do appreciate, you know, I do appreciate a woman who can put the really the whole pussy in her art. Yeah, right. I put my whole pussy in it. <laughs> I'm not joking when I say I put my whole pussy in everything I draw. <laughs> I'm dead serious when I say that. Incredible. Thank you. Thank well, you know what? My room. It's not a deal breaker. I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so glad. I have some copy of some, oh, some yeah. Xbox game on the floor. I just wanted everybody to know I don't own an Xbox, but I have Xbox games. In what case is... I guess I can ever get an Xbox. What is what game is that actually? Is that Ninja I feel like that's Ninja Gaiden or something. And then I have a uh, figure. That's probably accurate. I do have figure boxes sometimes just laying in my room. I usually try to clean them up, but sometimes they do be just in my room. I'm bad about that just because, like, I'm always like, well, yeah, but if I'm going to transport the figure, I might as well do it in the box, right? And then I, when it comes right. time to transport it, I never transport them. And I don't put everything painstakingly back in the box usually, but I just hold um, on to them. That's why I've kept mine because for, like, future planning, I'm like, well, if I have to, like, transport them, I don't want to, like... You know, I, there's also the thing it's like, oh, like, you know, their value, you lose the value if you get rid of the box. I, I plan on never selling any of mine. Right. So, like, I don't really care about resale value, but my, my mine's mainly for transportation. I don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get you. I don't want them to break. I haven't <laughs> had the experience of having to move them yet, but I'm ready in case I do. Yeah. Sadly, I have I have had the experience of one of my Nendos breaking. No, see, that's what I'm so scared of. Yeah, my like his shot. Oh, what if her feet break? You know, oh god, that'd be horrible. Be that. <laughs> <laughs> what is she even worth without her feet? No, um, <laughs> but no, the the um, I don't know the the. Where's my train of thought? Oh, just that um, I didn't even, like. I have figures I need to put up still. And I have figures that like have have suffered some damage, but yeah, like I'm just I don't know. I can't get rid of anything. I I'm terrible about getting rid of packaging, um, even though I probably should. But yeah, I don't know. Thank you for taking me to your room. Um, my cave, my my yes, little, your my lovely nook, my cranny. Yeah, <laughs> I would. Mm, yeah. Sorry, I would I would I would normally catch that and make a, a an appropriate remark about crannies, but I'm I'm a little really still taking the room in. Um I mean I can make you some coffee. I I think that's a coffee maker over there. Yeah, it looks like a like that's that's probably what that is. <laughs> it looks like a Keurig. I don't know. I'm sure it you have be. I'm sure you have your own system. Is that not like <laughs> just a hot water heater? 
I don't know what it is. It looks like it looks like a, a standard like that just keeps hot water this ready is to go. Genuinely, what happens when you let a fox and a rat live together? <laughs> <laughs> it does smell like corn this... chips in here. That's kind of incredible. That's my feet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's not the room. That's my feet. <laughs> the very, the very beautiful footwear you were wearing before, d d during the earlier parts of the day. Just, I was impressed how, how powerfully you kicked them off as soon as you walked inside. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be, you know, it's it's an Asian household. You take your shoes off at the door. It's true. I so, you know, people. I I get why people talk about that like an Asian thing because that is a you know culturally a thing in many countries in Asia. But at the same time, I. I'm so used to doing it here in America. I'm just like, I think everyone should do it. I don't think it should be an Asian oh, thing. I think. No, I completely understand. Facts. It should be a thing. Take your uh, dirty I, fucking stompers off at the door, please. I always like, I kind of harass my kids in the sense of like, they wear like slippers to school. And like, I don't really care if they wear slippers to school, but I ask them, I'm like, do you wear those slippers like in your house when you get home? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, so you're telling me you you walk around all day and walk around to the stores or whatever in your slippers. Then you go home and you walk around on your floors with those same shoes. Y'all are nasty. Y'all are gross. <laughs> and they're like, no, you're gross. You're the weird one. And I'm like, no, I'm not the weird one. You're the weird one. Like, yeah, I... I'm, I'm chill if you want to wear the slippers out, but not back in your house. You should have, like, outdoor slippers and then, like, indoor slippers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, my, my dad just wears shoes everywhere indoors and it that's crazy it's just that's so wild to me <laughs> like i don't know because like uh, there's like i i still don't agree with it but like hardwood floor is one thing but like he has carpet in his house and i'm just like uh the carpet in the house not the carpet like i don't know i'm just like at this point i'm so used to taking my shoes off that i just it's it's oh, what was it I, I, we take our shoes off and then we even have like spare slippers for when guests come over mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that way they can put on some slippers oh yeah no there's a um there's a fucking scene in um the new bleach show that they've been putting out with that last arc of bleach and one of the antagonists shows up in ichigo's room in shoes on his bed and he just oh my god there's just a cut That's... where ichigo's just staring at the shoes in the bed and he's just like you can tell he's like snapped a little bit because i'm and i i'm like this is viscerally this feels wrong on so many levels yeah no for sure like that would that would be my 13th reason high key if i saw somebody in my bed with shoes on i'd be like oh my god it's like that or like um god, there's 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 a uh, magical girl uh, anime uh, that, where you see this lady, she's drinking like matcha, like not just green tea, but like matcha, you know, traditionally prepared and all that. And she just puts sugar cubes and heavy cream in it. And you can watch the, the, the two like Japanese characters be like, no, no, you're not. So no. And then just like. <laughs> I, I, little little cultural pain points like that are just very like mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know it's just very funny anime makes good use of that shit it does it does it really does yeah We're running into my I'm so bad at like I think every date I've been on ever I'm always like I can just keep talking forever so they always go super <laughs> all, all of my dates are like yeah yeah, we talked for five hours, and I'm just like, hmm, there should be a graceful way to end the date. But I'm not mm -hmm. the I'm not the kind of bitch that finds that one easily. Um, I don't know. I just I'm just like when I when I'm talking to someone that is fun to talk to and I like them, I don't want to stop talking to them. So even if we're in this horrendous room, it's you know what it has its own beauty. Obviously, it, really it does. being there, it, it does it being your room, it has a system, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just kind of like uh, I just find a little spot and I nestle up and I curl up, and then my rat finds me. Oh, so cute! I've asked I've asked Conquer before, and I'm like, because um, we've the brainstormed his, his character together, 
and, and the bottom line is basic. You know, like how to a boyfriend and they're pigeons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like we we see what they would be like if they were humans. Mm-hmm. But they're pigeons at the end of the day. Yeah, you know what I mean. I get you. I get you. So like you can visualize the 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 more they humanoid give a version visual of what they would look like, but you're dating pigeons. But you're you're still like you're still dating a rat. Yeah, that's like what it is with Conker. Conker's mm. a rat, but we see a visual of what Conker <laughs> looks like. But Conker is a rat, <laughs> so it is kind of like I'm holding a little rat with me all the time. Hmm. That's it's adorable. Yeah, I do just have a rat on me. It's very cute. He's kind of he's watching us. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I can. I can. I can see him back there. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's it's been a really nice date. It's I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know, I already said that I'm down for more dates, but are you? Yeah. Do absolutely. I get the second date? I'm down for more date. You would get a second date for Hell sure. Yeah. For, would you get a second date for me, especially after this? Is this our make or break? I still would. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay! Okay, second date it is. We've made it. We've made it to the second date. Yeah. I say this is pretty pretty successful. I think this was pretty good. Yeah. And chat, I hope you had a fun time being a bunch of fucking voyeur perverts and watching us. Um ooh. <laughs> Wait, ooh, call them out. Get them. Get them. Sometimes I like to slide into being like not changing my tone but being really fucking mean for no reason. Yeah, no, you you did that perfectly. I just I just think it's a fun bit. Um plus I know some of the fucking scum out there like that anyway, so good for them. Um, but yeah, no, I think this was lovely. Um, and I think we will find someone to raid. Um, Ooh, raiding! <laughs> someone posting their, their full collection of awkwards, although they're missing one. They're missing, they're missing my awkward. Um, so let's see, what should I do for the raid message? Um, let's do, how does a Love Wins raid sound to you? Uh, love that, yes, I want a Love Wins. Hell yeah. Alright, so we're gonna do a... Let's see, we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna give a raid message, and I think, um, unless there was someone you had in mind to raid, I think I have someone picked out. No, I have no idea. You go for it. Cool. Um, so we're going to raid a um, another trans creator who's actually doing an art stream right now. Um, so oh, I... I want and, to see art. Yeah, and I actually did... Um, when I did my charity stream with Aurora, um, or when I was on Aurora's charity stream, I should put that more precisely, um, I, I was uh, part of the... Out of the rotation of hosts and guests, I ended up with, uh, hanging out with Rattles. So we're going to raid Rattles, because Rattles is very cool. Um, and good at art, and a funny, and a fun, lovely person. Um, and then, yeah, for the... Let's see, for the subscribers out there, we're gonna do my... Lorn H. Love, and we're gonna go ahead and... Do that. So, these are the two raid messages. We're gonna grab one of those, and we're gonna start our raid. Um, I'm gonna peep. I'm gonna finally peep at your stream so I can see the raid message. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Cute. Yeah. You've been very good not to, to peek at it. And for the people who are in chat, um, I appreciate you 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 stand here even if I wasn't being very responsive because I was putting I was devoting my full attention to to my date. Um, yeah, to the date. You know, yeah. date date rights. Yeah. So we're gonna start our raid. We're gonna get ready to go to rattles. Um, for those who raided who are still around, thank you so much. Um, and everyone who gave suggestions and um, made use of the command, thank you so much. It was um, I I couldn't have done it without you. We got look where we got. We're here in a room. <laughs> anyway. We're here. We're here for sure. We're definitely existing. Oh yeah, we're undeniably here. Um, <laughs> but yes, love wins. Um, I love my fox wife. Thank you so much for joining me on this oh, wonderful you. date. 
And yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking me here. It's been of so course. much fun. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'll see everyone later. Have a lovely evening, morning, or time zone. Bye bye. Click the button. I clicked, I clicked at the button. Ooh, you did click the button. Wait, did it not? We are here. Introduce. No, continue to track. Okay, it did. Oh, yeah. Lauren Haley. Hi.